Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. Riding dragons flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we that clap and fuck our way into the fight. I do electrify through my penis I rise in full supply I'm gonna rock sure you can't deny Risk it, rip, rap, flip by the name Let's go Okay, All let's right. start with everyone Last week you um, all visited the lovely homelands of uh, Ragnar and um some, and you visited some uh, interesting characters in their homelands, and you also discovered that Bjorn, the uh, chieftain of the uh, Fancy Feast land, was also not no longer there, and he had been kidnapped or had somehow disappeared from that homeland. And now you received an invitation to uh, 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 an invitation to a castle called Wishbone over in another land there in the same island. And you are going to go adventure and then try to find that location soon. So I guess that's where you're headed today. So today you're going to go to Castle Wishbone and try to locate Bjorn and find out what's going on with him and uh, try to discover what's what's happening there. Also discovered some Twistos chips, which were uh, picked up also by someone, and um, hopefully those will come in handy. So arrive at Wishbone Manor, and the party's go is a party going on. You knock at the door, and you're greeted by a small squirrel-like humanoid in a fancy suit. He comes over, and uh, he uh, waves you in, and he says, Come, come, the party's already begun. I make the lady wait. You're rushed into a fancy dining area where you see a group of people of various races gathered. Some have on animal costumes, and some are uh, genuinely animal races. They've gathered around a large, fancy table that has all manner of food spread out in a feast-like spread. Eat bread, a glass of wine, they kind of wait for each party-goer to uh, sit at and take a seat. The squirrel person says, Sit, sit, the lady will be joining us soon. The guests hurriedly take their seats at the table, some looking rather nervous and others looking rather hungry. I'm going to gather, gather your, your place at the table. I kind of feel like we're not dressed appropriately for this. Uh, I mean, I fit right in. You don't like my robes? Okay, well, you guys look great. Me, maybe not so much here. <laughs> you look fabulous, uh, darling. Perfection. Don't worry. All right, you all take a seat at the table, and uh, moments later, you hear a booming voice that seems to appear out of nowhere, and it says... Thank you for accepting my invitation, everyone. I hope you are enjoying the party so far. Please partake of all the fine food and drink before you, and afterwards we'll move into the parlor for some entertainment, my favorite part of the night. Please eat up. Don't take it as me being rude. Uh, I don't really eat, so I'll be more than happy to sit in the presence of you, though. I'm devouring it. everything. Down and they've started uh, gathered around and started grabbing some uh, some food. Some are eat, are barely like grabbing their their spoons and are kind of just barely eating some of the food. And some are kind of just you know ravenously eating nervously in kind of a a frantic uh, pace, you know, in a nervous manner. And others are just kind of like just barely barely eating. And and some are just kind of looking at their plates, not sure what to think. I'm shoveling the food in. It is all going down my beak. I'm slurping the soups. I've got mashed potatoes all down the front of my shirt. Everything. Yo, Ratsum, you want some more? Absolutely. You going to eat that? Uh, be my guest. P pass it on down. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass Ratsum my plate. What are we eating here? What's in the plate? <laughs> It's, it's delicious, food. I'll there's tell you that. Bread, there's some soup. There's, just, I mean, a big this is food that you've probably never seen likes of in, in your life. Probably things you could never afford. It's so fancy and expensive. Yeah, give me a couple plates. I'll take anybody's plate that doesn't want it. 
dig Kea, in, my friends. The, the squirrel called, uh, who, who introduces himself as D's Nuts, hands and passes you some food down the, down, down the table. Yeah, that's what's up. All right, thank you, D's Nuts. Appreciate it. Is D's Nuts our maitre d' of the night, or who is, who is this D's Nuts? D's Nuts introduces himself as as a, someone who is like a part of the party, but is also like, you know, helping out with uh, some of the guests and kind of making everyone feel at home. I rolled an insight check, uh, 27. I'm watching the main uh, host, the, the lady that's all dressed up, just kind of watching her, seeing if I get anything off of her. Uh, you don't get anything off of her. She's just kind of, you know... So fancy, see, she's a noble woman, very, very, very uh, fancy, schmancy. Um, you do t see that she has great etiquette and that she is very fancily dressed, but you don't see anything in particular, you know, adverse about what she's trying to say or do. She just kind of wants everyone to have a good time and everyone to enjoy their meal at this point. All right, well... Got some food here. It seems like everybody's happy. What's furry number three doing later? You. Well, let's <laughs> hope so. Hello, furry number three. Yeah, there, there, there. This definitely a, a type of party that you know you would expect many things to be going on besides just uh, just eating. Put that way, of entertainment of various types and sorts. Oh. Can I show her my sword or my axe and see if she is impressed? Definitely. Furry number three, look at my big axe. Does it impress All right. you? Roll, roll a charisma check. All right. I wasn't thinking this when you first came here, but now the, the term castle wish bone is picking up something different now to me. <laughs> I went and rolled an 11. All right. Well, it, it appears that she is not highly impressed with that weapon of choice. She's, you know... Mm, it could have been could have been a little bigger, you know. I've heard that a few times. It's fun. <laughs> so when you are all done eating, the uh, she once again the booming voice appears and says, "I hope you enjoyed your meal." And now on to the entertainment portion of tonight. My favorite part. Would you please join me in the parlor? Okay. Let's go. Hell yeah! All right. Let's do it. I love entertainment. You come into this fancy parlor and you see that there's a few other guests that have already gathered there and they can seem to be practicing, you know, different assorted uh, sort of entertainment routines. You see one's kind of, you know, pure wedding and a dance routine and some others have kind of got some, you know, instruments out and they're, they're kind of jamming, doing a couple of uh, riffs on, 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 on their instruments. And, and you see a couple other people just kind of talking and, and, and kind of, you know, mouthing to themselves as if they're practicing some things. And then all of a sudden, you know, she says, okay, um, would you like to start uh, these nuts? And these nuts kind of pulls out, you know, some nuts out of his pockets and he, and he starts to juggle them. And he pulls them out of the air and he starts, you know, juggling them in, his air, in, his, in the air and he goes faster and faster and faster. And all you see these, juggle, these nuts just go in the air and he's like swirling around and he's doing all these fancy tricks with them. And all of a sudden he's done with his routine. Uh, the noble lady just kind of claps her hand. She goes, here you go. As soon as she does, all the other guests kind of do the same thing. Kind of nervous and guarded. She points at Ted Red, boot knocker, and she goes, What do you have for us, Mr. Boot knocker, is it? Hi, yeah. I, I actually, uh, first of all, I just want to say you juggled those nuts very well. And uh, I would like to play a song for everyone, if you're open to it. That would be very, very lovely. Please. All right. Just give me one sec here. Uh, Kira, is there is there like open flame candles, sconces and stuff like that in this room? Were you able to hear me okay? Well, there are a couple. Yeah, there are a couple in, in the side. You can see one over there in the corner behind um, these nuts. Okay. When uh, he's. And the, the little, little chandelier, a little sconce over there on the other side. When he's playing, uh, at any point, there's some sort of chromatic peak in his song. I'm going to be casting a, a level zero Thermergy, I believe it's called. 
I don't know if I pronounced it right, but I'm going to like elevate the lights to a little bit higher brightness to kind of drive home his song. Right. It's good. All right. So this song goes out to one of my best friends and it is to hopefully make you feel better. I call it No Capo, No Cry. Can you hear it? Yep, yep. Yeah. All right, here we go. Fucked you twice in the Big Brother house in Toronto. And then in Bjorn's office, oh, we saw that bag of chips. And you wanted to chop them into pieces. Pronto. Oh, we found out Ragnar likes a little shot color. Yeah. The red sum shared with you. Cat a thunder clapped and almost killed the kitties. But RW and I got all them saved. And faceless tank the titty lady. No cap on no cry. Say, no cap on no cry. Here, little axe wielder, we're all here for you. So, no cap on no cry. Yeah, yeah, that was oh, awesome. Amazing. <laughs> Great Love job. It. Thank you all very they much. They get better and very better. Very good. Very good. Thank you. They get better and better each week. Amazing. Great song. What's the whole room do? Is everybody like clapping and just enjoying it? I believe so. <laughs> and if they aren't, they better get up because I'm swinging my axe. If they aren't, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving them the death stare if they are not yeah. enjoying. There's gonna be some squirrel <laughs> stew in a minute if they don't uh, if they don't start clapping. <laughs> Lady Variol um, starts clapping all of a sudden, and uh, everyone else in the room just starts going crazy. They go wild, and they start clapping and cheering. And all of a sudden, it just goes quiet again. It's like, shh, shh, shh. Fine, shh. All right, so um, she turns around. She goes, okay. Um, she points at the per at, over there, over at Capone. She goes, you with the big axe. Uh, uh, your turn. Entertain me. Uh, okay, so I uh, I stand up, and I... And, uh, you know, I'm not much of an entertainer myself, unlike our uh, beautiful Tedred. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I can sit here and I can tell some, uh, some, some jokes. Would you guys like to hear a joke? Yeah. Be lovely. I like jokes. Yeah. I want to hear it. Okay. 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 How much? Now, my jokes are very limited here. How much does a pirate pay per, per piercing? A buccaneer. A buccaneer. Uh, a buccaneer. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> okay, how about you, uh, uh, lady with the wings? I'm trying to give anybody in our group an eye. And, like, my best, like, uh, we should recognize this. Oh, um, I do have a really good um, spell that I like to use every once in a while. I can show you if you want. Oh, please, please. <laughs> I'm just going to put my rubber on before you do this. Just give me a quick second here. <laughs> can I uh, leave the room? <laughs> I mean, I can... Oh, no. <laughs> History um... repeats itself. We're just... 
I'd rather not. I mean, I should, we should go outside if we're going to do this. So I think mine, I'm, I'm for more of an outdoor activities type of girl. So my okay, tricks are for your, outside. We'll do yours later then. Um, <laughs> uh, how about um, the one without a face? You, you. Yes. So I've got a nice little trick for you. So um, I am going to cast Minor Illusion. I'm going to hold my hand up to my mouth, and I'm going to make it like I'm breathing fire with my Minor Illusion. And as the fire comes out of my uh, mouth, it's like a dragon's face. And then as the flames come out of my mouth, it's going to turn into a, a dragon that flies around the room. And yeah. And I'm just going to have a dra- um, fly- um, flaming flying dragon illusionally flying around the room. Wow, very impressive. Very impressive. You see this dragon flying all over and it's just flames flying all over the place. Wow, that, that, that's pretty impressive. I had not seen that before. Thank okay. you. Okay, um, um, and, and what have you for me, you for me, um, 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 Kitty Kitty, yes, uh, you, um, the rope, yes. Ah, you are in for a treat as a master of the elements. I am going to make you an ice sculpture, one of which you have never seen. I will cast Ray of Frost, and I will create a six-foot-tall squirrel with a giant strap-on. Yeah. All of a sudden, you see this giant ice just you know, flow everywhere, and you see this giant squirrel with a strap on appear out of nowhere, made of, of pure, beautiful ice. And, and she goes, oh, the whole crowd just goes, Oh, wow. Ooh. And, and it's like, Yeah, that, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. I, I, I like that. That, that, that. That's definitely unique. I, I could use that in my. Uh, my, at my next uh, party for a, a for for a centerpiece for the table, awesome, uh, wonderful, beautiful. Uh, I I do work for a small fee making ice sculptures. Just saying. Well, I I must indeed uh, uh, uh your number. Um um ah <laughs> uh, yes. Um, how about you, bird person? Your turn. Uh, all Is right, that like so... a derogatory term, bird person? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one, but. My name is Retsum. Welcome you to the Yeteet Tale. Uh, I am going to climb. Is there like a chandelier? Where's the highest point in this room? Wherever the highest point is, I'm going to fly on up there. Hang from the chandelier. And do a double backflip, uh, but purposely landing right on my beak. Beautiful form. Beautiful wow. form. Very, very impressive. I know a few who can do that. All He's right. Eric Coker and Lawn Dart. <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> and uh, how about uh, the other Warforged um, over there? Can you, can, what can you do to entertain me? Well, my fair lady, you are in luck. Not only am I a renowned medical doctor, I am also a licensed, renowned chiropractor. And you look very uptight and like you haven't had a good one in a very long time. So I'm going to hook you up with a good one. And I will use my medicine and try to give her a sensual massage to maybe lure her just a little bit towards me. Not a medical massage. But but an erotic massage. Oh yeah, give her a good one. Ah, and you hear her go, oh, ah, mm, mm, that feels so good. Ah, thank you, thank you. That that was very, very impressive. Um yes, it's been a while for me. Yes, indeed. Thank you, thank you. I give her a wink and walk away. She asks a couple other people to come up and one has a little nice little dance and and she's she's pretty impressed with all of them, and and she's 
perfectly happy. And then she looks at all of you and she goes, splendid, splendid, splendid. Very, very, very entertaining. Thank you very much. Um, please enjoy the rest of the night and uh, enjoy the mansion and, and wander around. And I will be approaching some of you individually later with my reviews of your performances and um, perhaps a reward or two. We'll see how it goes. And then she wanders off. And I should have slapped her on the ass. Damn it. This, <laughs> this is a fun party, guys. I like it. There's erotic massages. There's amazing comedy. I just got to say, there was incredible jokes being told, but it's been a fun party. Yeah, the jokes definitely stole the show. Oh, I, yeah. I would agree. And I definitely uh, I definitely would like to go back to the uh, the last room at some point so we can check out all those, uh, those furries because I think they have a good time. Can I do a – can I make a little bet with uh, D's Nuts over here? Does D's Nuts want to make a little wager with me? Does he seem like a strong squirrel? He's kind of short, you know, you know, but he's, you know, he's okay, you know. Does it seem like he's a, a betting kind of squirrel? Yeah, he, he might be convinced to, to bet to bet something with you. Tell you what, is he interested or anybody in of his friends, anybody in this beautiful place that we're in would like to challenge me to a nice arm wrestle for a little friendly wager, a little wager, maybe a little information or a little wager or something, maybe some gold. Yeah, yeah, D's nuts. D's nuts definitely uh, is interested in, in in arm wrestling you for sure. Looks like he's pretty thick. He's got some biceps on him, you know. So yeah. looks like he does some curls, you know. So uh, yeah, I'd like to challenge him for maybe a little to a little arm wrestle or something, and uh, maybe he can tell us a little something of what's going on around here. All right, sounds good. Uh, Ole hey, Kier. Kier, while he's doing this, I kind of want to observe all these other people that we don't know in here. Uh, okay. If I pick up anything, I'll roll a perception check. Right. A strict check. We got um, 17. One. All right. Um, you notice that most of the people there, like I said, are kind of just performers and guests like you that have kind of uh some of them are, are feeling slightly slightly less nervous now than they were before, and some of them are feeling slightly more nervous than they were before. Um, but for the most part, they're just kind of enjoying the party and uh um some are kind of off in the corner doing things that you know probably you don't want to know about. And then others are kind of just uh, talking and chatting in the corner. You don't see anything necessarily. They, they kind of think about, about, know about as much as you do for most the most part. These nuts seem to know slightly more than, than anyone else, probably. So uh, do right. you roll a, a strength check, Capone? Let's do it. Yikes. Yikes. Um, wow. Not uh, one. Yeah, the uh, the squirrel grabs his grab each other's arms. You start pulling on each other, and, and and for some reason the squirrel has you know a lot more strength than you do, and he's kind of just, uh, uh, he struggle, and then all of a sudden, boom! He like actually pulls his arm, pulls your arm down, and he actually wins that 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 uh, struggle between the two of you in the the arm wrestling competition. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, for some reason, the squirrel is has beaten you, Yikes. which is really you know quite a blow to you. <laughs> is he now I'm a little bit upset and embarrassed by this. Is there any chance he wants to go round two with me? A double or nothing kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, he'd do that. He'd do that. Let's do it. Oh, be careful, Capone. Yeah, that that squirrel oh, knows how to crack some. That's nuts. how it's done. <laughs> we went from a nat oh, one you to it. From a nat <laughs> one to a twenty. Yeah. Wow. I was a little embarrassed. Okay. I was a little embarrassed. I gave it all my might this time. I looked him right in the little squirrel eyes and I said, listen, buddy. Yeah, and I went hard. His arms, he locked arms, and he looked in your eyes, and you looked in his eyes, and for some reason he looked intimidated this time. He 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 was really scared, and and and, and you see the arms locked, and 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 he just folded, and bam, he won that one. Let's go now. Um, since you know we're uh, you know I trust he's a very uh, trustworthy guy. Is there any information you can tell our party here today? Maybe something we need to look out for, something that maybe will help us on our little adventure through this place today. You look at these nuts, and these nuts looks over to you, and he kind of looks at you and he goes, I can tell you this. Uh, uh, if you don't entertain her properly enough, she will uh, come visit you, and uh, yeah, things don't work out too well for you. I think that's what happened to that guy from that, you know, hat place over there a while back. Yeah, he kind of, you know, things didn't work out too for, too well for him. He uh, he actually was honored. He was given an honor, but, you know, I don't think he appreciated it very much. And, uh, yeah, well, that didn't work out too well for him, I don't think. Um, 
she goes and visits the ones she really likes, and then she also goes and visits the ones she really doesn't like. So it's kind of, you know, a little off, you know. Um, you know, you either want to impress her or you don't want to impress her, but um, if you impress her too much, it doesn't work out well for you. If you don't impress her enough, it doesn't work out for well for you either. So I kind of want to be in the middle of this uh, little entertainment um, competition. You know what I mean? All right. That's good information. That's good to know. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, D's Nuts. You're oh, a beautiful and, and, soul. And stay out of the pantry. Stay out of the pantry. That's always good advice, right? Stay out of the pantry. Yes, always, always. <laughs> Mr. I think the middle uh, of the house is the best place to be. Mr. D's Nuts, uh, what was the name of this person that did that impressor recently? Um, it started, I think it started with a B. A B, maybe? Bjorn? Uh, yeah, that, that sounds pretty familiar. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. These nuts just pulls out some nuts and starts, you know, gnawing on them. We're gonna look over at these nuts and say, "Listen, we're just gonna look around. Don't mind us. You see nothing. You don't know anything." And uh, let's just start looking around. There's some cabinets and stuff, and some books and stuff. There's, I saw there's a book on the other side of the table there. I don't know if there's anything to that or was there a book? This nice book right here. Yeah, and uh, and be very careful. There is a book there. Just just be careful as you're wandering around. You look at the desk and you see that there is a book there. Looks like someone has written into it. It looks kind of like a, a maybe a page from a diary. Would someone like to read it? Who's the Who's the best at reading on our turn on our team? Oh boy, I don't know. Is that a skill or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be. I can give it a go. All right. So All right, for fourth it. Fourth of Ron. I fear that the lady was not impressed with my routine, and although I have been told not to be concerned, I am afraid this does not bode well for me. Fifth of Ron, I keep hearing voices coming from the pantry, moaning and wailing. I've not seen either of the two friends, Emil and Kalar, I met at the party since yesterday. I fear the worst for them. Sixth of Ron, the worst has happened. I'm afraid Lady Viriel has appeared and told me of her displeasure. Not long after, I was visited by one of her minions, and now I will never be able to return home. Seventh of Ron, the hunger is so great now. I cannot live like this much longer. I miss my family, my town, but I dare not return. Fancy feasts would be decimated by my hunger. Eighth of Ron. I cannot take much more. I do not wish to exist this way. I will return to my home one more time to say farewell to my old life and then end it. I will go in the night when no one will see me. I cannot allow my hunger to take me while I am there or anyone to see what I have become. Fancy feast forever. Does that look like it's written in blood with my uh, medical knowledge? Yes, it does appear it is written, written in blood. Good spot. Yikes. Yikes. Well, this is just definitely uh, took a turn for the, for the worse. <laughs> that was pretty creepy. And the blood also <laughs> appears, as you noticed it, to, uh, to be slightly similar, very, very similar. In fact, in fact, exactly similar to the kind of blood that you saw at, back in Fancy Feast at the office. Oh yeah, back in that room, yeah, in the bedroom. Oh, they. Well, I'm not saying this in front of them. I kind of whispered to the team, like, they they freaking turned him into a vampire. Um, I don't think we should go back there. I think we should just hang out here, just forget this, and I think we should go ahead and go. And stay out of the pantry. Stay out of the pantry. Um, I don't want to be a vampire. Yeah, you just went through a body transformation. That would be uncomfortable to go through another yeah. one again. Yeah, it would exactly. really, it would really you know. suck. <laughs> mm, <laughs> nice. You know what? That, I done. feel like that was <laughs> the best joke night. of the night. That was really good. That was good. the second <laughs> best. That was the second best joke of the night. But I see what you did there. It was still good. The, the top joke was mm. just really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, are we sure vampires are all bad? I think they might get a little bit of a bad rap. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're misunderstood? Yeah. You know what? I say we should send the cat in. You always want to sacrifice the cat. One cat has already died. Don't you have like nine lives or something, though? Yeah, there you go. Uh, that That's just a, a rumor. I'll go. I'll go in. I'll go right in. 
Let's. Uh, do you guys want to uh, look around a little bit more before we go in, or do you want to just go in and uh, see what's going on back there? We got to find this Bjorn guy. Let's see if he's okay. We we think he's here. I heard there was a pantry. <laughs> I'm staying out of that one. You. That's I all heard you guys. There's moaning <laughs> in the pantry. I'll be there if there's moaning. Well, there was moaning <laughs> and wailing. Yeah. I wonder if it was a good wailing. <laughs> I mentioned the Ragnar kind of quietly so that others can't hear. A, you might want to mentally prepare yourself. Your your past friend might not be the same when and if we come in contact with him. We will deal with that when we read it, when we get to it. Uh, not sure what to expect yet. All right, let's go. Let's go find some stuff. Yep. Giddy up. Let's go. All right, which way should we go? We do, do have we... choices. Do we want to go back to the room where we just ate stuff, or do you want to just move forward? I mean, I kind of want to go back there, but I kind of want to go alone, if that's okay, because I think there would be some fun things for me to do alone in there. I don't know <laughs> if you guys would be into that. All right. You need your uh, privacy. You need some space. Uh, yeah. Do your thing. There's sometimes that you just need to do things alone. Head Where are you all gonna go? There are a ton of uh, furries in there, and you're ha they're having a little bit of a uh, fun in there, off in the corner, just kind of hanging out and uh, doing their thing. So uh, feel free to uh, join in. I'm already, I'm already ready. But yeah, where do you, where do you all want to go? I'm diving in. I'm going. I'm going in. I'm going after this lady. No, I'm going to the. I'm going to the other side. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going after this lady. I want to see what's going on up ahead. We got to get to the bottom of this. Uh, I will follow up with support. I I will follow as well. I guess I'll go. Yeah, I'll go along too. Can't let Wait, them have all the fun. There's furry action. Yeah, oh, there's I mean... furry action going on in the uh, dining room. Okay, I'm gonna go in there. You might enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised you turned down the furry action, to be honest. But there we go. That's there you go. All right. So oh, yeah. two people oh, yeah. went for furry action. The other group, what are they doing? Uh, we are on the hunt. We're going on an adventure. The halls. Okay. Um, I will stay just on the outside of the furry room here, and I'm going to meditate. Uh, and try and speak with Cole Karan and just meditate. Okay. All right, which way would you all like to go? I'll zoom out a bit so you can see. Uh, yeah, let's see the map. Does it all connect or does, is there two dead ends on either? Because there's a dead end on either side. Uh, no, uh. There's a door there, a door there, and a door there. Okay, but does, does the whole... Does it is it big one big square or is it kind of like two L's where they kind of have dead ends at the end? It looks like we Good can get question. everywhere from okay that direction. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, that's a big room in the middle too. Okay, where do you guys want to go? Yeah, this is outside here. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see. I didn't see the doors leading on the inside. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, wherever you guys want to go. Well, I guess we we already went from the front door. We've been in the dining room. We didn't go in this little courtyard area. We could check that and then move forward. Sure. Works for me. Let's do it. All right, you move into a, a small courtyard area that seems to have some different sorts of plants. Some of them look slightly alive. Some of them look slightly dead, but they all look, you know, at least somewhat interesting. Um, they're definitely something diff different than anything you've ever seen before. But for the most part, they're no nothing really, you know, you want to pick up or, or take with you. But there are definitely uh, uh, quite a few variety of plants here. Nothing out of the ordinary other than some plants that you can see, unless you wish to, of course, search. Um, I will roll a perception check to see if I notice anything. Okay. Oh, this is not going to be good. 
Yeah, you'd not see anything necessarily off the edge. You kind of see like a little hint of like a small kind of like stone off over on the edge of like a corner, but that's about it. Huh. They really tell what else is out there in that area. Back behind one of the plants. Okay. So, uh, maybe I should do a little roll. Go for it. That's better. Okay, Rexham takes his paw and, like, kind of just you know, reaches out and like, back behind there and kind of stretches out one of his little claws and, like, goes out there and grabs it with his claw. And he pulls out, like, a little bone coffer set that's kind of got like, some citron and some zircon in it. It's kind of like a, kind of at the bottom, it's kind of like a like, T at the bottom, on, engraved on the bottom of it. Ooh. Like the letter T is on the bottom of it? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Can we just start flipping all these pots over and stuff? <laughs> Smash! Just start kicking. Just, just start kicking them all the over. <laughs> yeah. You know, start kicking these pots over and looking for letters. You don't see anything else. As you start knocking the pots over, you see them on the side. You're kind of looking at the bottoms of them. You don't really see anything else on the bottom of these pots. They're just kind of just normal pots. The only thing you found so far in here is this one bone coffer set. It seems to have some gemstones in it, and that's it. Okay. The tea at the bottom. I think we should hold on to this. Don't know. Uh... That sounds like buried treasure to me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So to the next room. Hold on yeah, to it. Let's, let's head on, uh, I guess, this big courtyard here, right? Or whatever this is. All right. In the center of this courtyard, you see a gigantic tree. It kind of looks a bit dead. And you see some barrels and a few uh, other lovely pieces of wood and uh, um, some turtles over in the corner and um, a squirrel or two. And, um, of course, a, a nice wood box. But it's just a general courtyard. Like maybe an out, outdoor area with uh, maybe there's some uh, places to feed some squirrels. And okay. Many doors. Many doors, many squirrels. A couple of turtles. Um, yeah. Are these just regular squirrels? Are these like magical squirrels? Can they talk? Or are they just kind of just squirrels? They're squirrels? just normal squirrels. All squirrels are magical squirrels. They're the gang hand sign kind. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything in this room? I mean, do you want to just... Can we check this tree out and see what it is? Like, what's going on with the tree? Check the tree out. What, what would we need to roll for the tree? Roll a perception check or an investigation check. Who wants to take care of that one? Mine's a minus one, so I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, not, not great. Yeah. But, not great you know, we some kind of see something maybe up at like kind of the top of the tree, kind of just kind of glinting at the top of the tree, a little higher up in the tree. I'll roll investigation. Perception wasn't my friend last time. Oh, I did investigation at 22. Sorry. Oh, no, awesome. I also got a 22, so. Hey. Hey, we're working together. Uh, Let's go. Nice. Right. Um, you definitely see that there is something up higher in the tree, but you would have to climb to get to it. Can I just throw one of these really guys up there? Is necessarily. Oh. Okay. How we tall is said tree? We've got a cat right here. Um, look at the tree. It's probably not too tall. It's maybe, you know, I don't know, 15 feet. I got gonna, this. I, I have I'm gonna throw climbing you? as a natural skill. All right, there you go. So right. I will climb the tree. Roll a, roll a athletics check. Oh, of course, it's athletics. With my plus zero. <laughs> 16. Nice right. roll. Good job. And you, you grab your claws and with your uh, naturally natural athletics there and uh, your, your, your uh, um, cat-like claws, 
you're able to climb up to the top of the of the tree and you grab this stoneware bowl out off this tree. Looks like it was used maybe as a, as a feeder to a squirrels up there. And it's a stoneware bowl painted with some woodland imagery. And at the bottom of the bowl, you notice that there is a V at the bottom of the bowl. Ooh, another letter. Okay. Climb back down. Hopefully. Guys, we found a television. We have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can I just done... ch chop that box in front of me for no reason, just because, just, just to sure. cut it up? <laughs> little straight check. <laughs> All right, just to give it a little chop. You know what I mean? What if Dungeons and Dragons had Wheel of Fortune in it? This could be that. <laughs> you smash that box into like basically match 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 sticks. It's like smashed into nothing. You've got wood flying everywhere. You don't see anything inside the box. Just a bunch of uh, pieces of wood now on the ground, all smashed into bits. Just getting some mango. Oh, good. All right. Well, you guys are doing that. I'm starting to get hungry over here because I've been, you know, going to town in this little furry orgy. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start heading. I completely forgot where, where to get food. So I'm just going to walk out. I'm going to say, Cala w, uh, so Cala and RWA, do you want to come try and find some food? Yeah, I'm game. Sure. I was just making yeah. sure... Uh, I was making sure you two were okay. Had a quick little <laughs> meditation session. Uh, was I able to establish a connection between myself and Cole Coran, uh, Kira? Yes. Yes, you were. Okay. Just give him a basic hello. Just want to make sure that we're still in tune. Still in tune here. Although you see, this is a little bit weak. Conception is a little bit weak. Because there's some interference from a, a nearby... Uh, um, world that is kind of a plane that's kind of you know interfering a little bit because there's some negative energy here, but it's not too bad. You're still able to get through. All right, thank you. How many more rooms we got? Fifty. So there's a uh, yeah, there's quite a few. There's a, a bedroom over here. There's a bedroom over here. There's a living room over here. Uh, a workbench. Uh, looks like a porta potty. Um. Tables in there, got like a kitchen area, and another room with food over there. So while you guys are thinking about which way to go, I'm going to lead uh, Kala and RWA into the kitchen area, try and look for some food. Okay. Well, we're not with them, so we can't talk to them. So we'll just do our thing until they figure out what they want to do. Yeah, so should we uh, head on into the door that's kind of closest to us there, or do we go to the opposite end? Okay. I rolled a perception check for the uh, eating quarters. <laughs> so I I'm looking for Testo's chips, specifically. <laughs> Te Testo's? <laughs> I'm sorry, Twistos. Twistos! Oh, jeez. Yeah, you're, you're looking around. You don't see anything in this particular area, but you do hear some noise coming from the other room next door. You hear some like people fighting, kind of bickering and, and going back and forth and kind of fighting with each other. Room oh. next door. Yo, Capone, go kick that door open. Yeah, go ahead in. I'm already there. Let's do it. I'm kicking it in. Let's go. I'm going in. I'm going straight in. Boom. Not I like, hey, you guys okay? Like, boom. No, I'm going in. I'm body checking through that door, and I got my axe in my hands, and I'm ready. What are we doing in here? What's going on? Talk to me. Right. You uh, walk into what appears to be a small pantry, and you see two elves arguing with each other. You see, they see you, they enter, they stop bickering with each other. They release several worm-infested zombies who lumber towards you, and then they attack you. Bring it on. Let's oh, go. For initiative. They're in the pantry. <laughs> my fr I broke rule number one. I broke my <laughs> own rule number one. <laughs> as soon as I heard her say it, I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> all right. I guess uh, we all roll initiative. I got a seven. It's a good thing we all met up. I, uh... I got a 15. I got a nice nat one. I got a 12. Well, if you were already in the kitchen, it would have been just logical the next room is the pantry. <laughs> um, sometimes. It's two for a uh, pirate. 
16 for the other and 18 for the uh, zombies. Okay, so zombies and then pirate 2 will be up first. All right, so the zombies are up first. Hey, you see these rot infested zombies? They've got geek, nasty worms on them. And uh, they each kind of, you know, as they're standing there, you see this worm launch out from each of these zombies. It attaches itself. To, uh, one attaches itself to um, Pwn. One attaches itself to uh, the next person who's closest near to it. To it, so it kind of launches out to the next one in line. There, it looks like that's going to be a uh, line of fire. That looks like that's uh, Ted Red. Oh, guys, I got worms. Yep, I was just going to say it. You beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> As just subconsciously, can I move further behind? Away from you. <laughs> are, these, are these worms, uh, like, ones you just got now? Or was that was that from the furry room? Mm, that's it's a good worm. question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, were, you were in the... Uh, the yeah, or orgy earlier. So, oh, if you didn't yeah. have them before, you have them now. Yeah, oh. exactly. Oh. It's it's one or the other. It doesn't really matter what the origin is. I ended up with them. I'm gonna have a lot of medicine checks coming up. Yeah, this worm kind of latches it onto uh, each of your skins, and um, yeah, just be aware it's there, and then uh, that's all they do. That's it. No damage? Wow. There's something to these worms. Yeah, 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 I'm creeped out now. Get it off, get it off! I I kind of find them a delicacy, but that's just me. <laughs> if you want to come over and start picking them off. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We'll do a little right, uh, so... cleansing session oh. after this. Don't worry. <laughs> so next up is uh, Pirate 2. All right. So you see this other pirate kind of, you know, standing over there in the, in the, in the corner. And it kind of comes off behind from behind these, this other uh, disgusting uh, person. And it kind of comes off there, this, this, this zombie. And it kind of comes off and it... Uh, cast a spell and you see it grab this thing and it, it casts a spell and all of a sudden you see this this giant huge uh field come over this whole area and you see it's like it's kind of just aura come over this whole area the whole surrounding the whole pantry area a 10 foot range that's awesome that effect by the way holy smokes i love it all right faceless is up next Okay, so that's a pretty close space to be fighting in. Can I move closer to the door and then delay the rest of my turn? Am I allowed to do that? That's too yeah. of an area to be fighting in. Move closer to the pantry door or to the outside doors? Um, I don't know. I'm going to quickly talk to my team. I think we need a bigger area to fight in. This is pretty close space. Bro, they're not gonna like go and like, oh, okay, we'll go fight on your terms. They're gonna do what they want to do. I don't mind blocking the door and you guys being potentially safe behind me. I don't mind doing that. I don't know. Somebody already got worms. I'll just, yeah, I'm gonna. Can I move closer? Um, I might do a range attack. I'm gonna toll of the dead. Actually, no. I am gonna chuck. Um, Bagira. I'm going to summon Balgira inside in the center of all those 
zombies. And what does that look like? Uh, King Kong. The summon fails completely. Ooh. Dissipates. Not doesn't happen. Uh. All right. Is that the end of your turn? All right. Ragnar is up next. Well, that was uh, kind of what I expected to happen there. Um, I am not going to cast any spells. I would like to move up and like peek around the door. I am going to take aim at the zombie and totally out of character, I am going to fire my crossbow at the zombie. If Ooh, my nice. if my thing will work, I'm not much of a uh, physical combatant, but quick on if the I, feet. If my character had an iPhone, I would be taking a picture of this event so that I could say I was here when Ragnar fired a crossbow. Uh, that's a twenty-two to hit. You are able to take your crossbow out. You see the little arrow go, and it goes ping, and it hits the zombie. Nice, bro. You're a hundred percent with a crossbow. And I did a massive three on the damage. All right. We just kind of, you know, shakes it, but it's like, you know, its arm gets cut shaken. Gets hit with it. Uh, that will be the end of my turn. All right. Next up is RWA. Okay, um, I would like to, uh, just a, a skill check, that's not an action, is it? Oh, no, go ahead. All right, Arcana check to see what that field looks like to me. Oh, Lord, seven? Probably not. Yeah, yeah you just notice that there's things, a lot of things that won't, won't work in that field. That's all you know. Okay. All right, I'm going to try... Uh, dispel magic on it, and, and let me cast that. I'll try to spell magic on it. On the magical effect that I can see. Thing happens. It doesn't affect it at all. Damn. Okay. Well, that is my turn. All right, so Tedred is up next, and uh, getting a little bit panicked about having worms. Do you mind if I ask where the worms are at me at the moment? Is it my butt? It's my butt, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely your butt. It's my butt. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hop up onto this table, uh, lie down, face first, and I'm going to cast my mage hand, and I'm going to instruct my mage hand to try and remove the worms out of my butt. Right, roll a uh, dexterity check. All right, dexterity. Uh, that's an eight. You try to pull it out of your rear end, uh, and you grab your mage hand, grabs the the worm, and it kind of yanks at your rear end, and it doesn't quite, you know, doesn't quite get it. Unfortunately, still kind of you know, lodged in there, pretty tight. All right, well. I'm hoping that one of you can figure out how to take it out of my butt, but uh, I was not successful. So I will remain laying here on my face first and wait for someone else to save me and end my turn. And next uh, up and is that, Capone. As, oh. as your turn ends, uh, you notice that it's kind of burrowing into your skin just a little bit, into your rear end, just a little bit deeper and deeper, and it does uh, one piercing damage. Oh, God. Right there oh. into your, your rear end. <laughs> oh, uh, it hurts so much, you guys. It feels like... <laughs> An eggplant, but stings. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm, I can see everything. I, oh my god. Turn away. Turn away. <laughs> 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 all right, so I take one damage and end my turn. All right, so I'm going to look at my team, and as I'm kind of just prepared to swing my axe, I'm going to see if they want me to pull. I look back and say, do you want me to pull them out of here, moving back, or do you want me to push forward? Because apparently I think I'm going to be the one doing the main damage here. So we're going to either push in or pull out, Giggity. They might mm. want to work on pulling out that uh, worm also that's attached to Yeah, you to got me. worms too. I have worms too. Bum. Yeah. yeah. In my bum? Yeah, yeah, bum worms. It's a whole thing. You might want to hop oh. up on this table with me. Oh my goodness. Okay. My, vote, my vote's to kill him, bro. I'll come and try and I, help you next round. I'm going in. Yeah. You know what? I could take I could take some worms in the bum. I could take a worm in the bum. Okay. Let's go. And I'm gonna, you know, we're turning around. Uh who gives the worms? Who's giving the worms? Is it the zombies? Zombies, yes. And the, did the pirates summon the zombies? Or did the zombies oh, yeah. appear on their own? I did not get the indication that they were summoned, that they were already here. They were attached to a wall, and they just released them. Okay, I'm going to take out the zombies then. Um, all right, we are going to go in. We are going to rage. We are coming in, swinging our big old axe, the circumciser. That guy right there, I'm taking his head off. Let's go. A 20 to hit. Nice hit. Sliced into it, and definitely you have, have sliced into this zombie, and you've done some damage, for sure. All right. Followed with 10 damage. And it, then... it, is, it is fairly hurt. Slightly hurt. Okay, and then attack number two. Yikes. Uh, nine to hit. It's a nat one. And unfortunately, has a, you sliced right past it and just barely missed it. All right, and then uh, I'm going to try to protect these guys as much as I can uh, behind me, and that's uh, that's the end of my turn. Also, the uh, worm has burrowed further into your rear end, and is uh, uh, doing a, a one point of damage as it as it burrows into your 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 uh, hind end there and in, in your butthole, and one point of damage. Ouch! Right. Big ouch! Big ouch! Just that's the that's the hardest hitting one damage I think I've taken so far. So. Definitely yeah, painful. I know what you mean. I, it hurts. Does anyone know how in uh, D and D Beyond to uh, input butthole damage? I think it's just regular damage. Just regular damage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just regular right. damage. The right. asterisk beside it. Yeah. yeah so yeah, definitely we'll feeling it. We'll right. make a note. We'll of it. Look for the <laughs> rectum condition. Put it in my stats. All right, Callie, you're up next. Um. So. Immediately want to uh, get out of range of uh, Pedred's uh, butthole and uh, let him figure that out on his own. Sorry. Um, let's see here. I sure think you don't maybe... want to take him out? No, okay. Take... <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> do not want to attempt my hand up there. Um... <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and do a thorn whip. Maybe I can reach in there and pull one of the guys closer to the door. And uh, so the guy, other guys can get some shots on them. A little bit easier. So uh, what I can see in my line of sight, I'm going to go ahead and uh, thorn whip into that room. And let's see here. Probably the pirate on the left there. Yeah, and did I bring him? To, and I'm going to also hit him and bring him to about where uh, the kitty cat is. Okay. And I have definitely dragged him towards you and uh, done some damage. Pulling toward, and now he is uh, very close to uh, Pinar there. Yeah. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end my turn. All right. Retsum is up next. All right. So uh, I see I see good old uh, head red up on this table in <laughs> quite a predicament. Um, that you find yourself here, my friend. Now, uh, I do know a thing or two about butts holes, and uh, I think I maybe can help you get this thing out. Uh, yes, please do, please do. <laughs> first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and strike some fear into this worm. Uh, so I, I give the little signal, the look <laughs> for everyone not to look at me. Uh, and I cast the uh, hour of reaping. Uh, to make uh try and make the at least a worm afraid of me. So each creature uh within thirty feet 
Uh, what do they have to make? So you're staring right at up there while you're doing it. Oh, yeah, I'm looking deep into that chocolate starfish. Uh, it's a DC uh, 15 wisdom save for uh, any uh, creature within 30 feet. Who's, uh, the uh, worm uh, does not seem to be affected. The worm is, is not the least bit concerned about you, uh, apparently. It's pretty uh, pretty occupied with getting deeper and deeper there. Its head's, its head's too far deep. It can't see me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to then just grab a hold and and tell uh, tell Ted Red, listen, on three, I'm going to pull, and I need you to, to push. So one, All right, I'll unclench. One... <laughs> Two, and I start to start pulling right after two. Ow. You yank, and, and the worm comes unloose, and it's seven points of damage, but it's gone. It's off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was really uncomfortable. All right. Uh, can, can I shoot the thing when it's on the floor? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's see. Uh... Yeah. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add I'm going to add some key points to this just in case cuz I feel like a 10's not going to be good enough. Uh so let's see what is that? 2 This is like a weird nightmare of the movie Tre- Tremors right now. <laughs> just remember we're going to have to do this for uh Capone. Um, right, uh, I'm clenched up right now. <laughs> just not looking forward to this. <laughs> You're using that word, we are, very liberally right now. I don't know who's volunteering oh. for that. <laughs> oh. Um. Don't worry, it wasn't too bad. It it stung a little bit on the way in and then on the way out. But other than that, I, I, I took it. I took it like a champ. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use uh, three key points to add, uh, what would that be, total six points onto this. So it's a 16 to hit. Okay, you have, have definitely hit the uh, worm. You out your your pistol and boom arm is uh is toast thank you for being so gentle with me retsum i really appreciate it nice uh and it did 10 points of damage i also just realized it did the damage before the hit but they were both 10s anyway so (laughs) (laughs) i think you guys are like considered like anti-eskimo brothers now or something weird like that yeah, yeah, we 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 have a a thing. It's it's happened. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all right. Uh, my only question it's, it's is: Is Ragnar gonna be jealous? It's a good question. That is a good question. Negative, negative. All right, he's all yours. All right. Everyone gets a little jealous, <laughs> but I think uh, <laughs> I think that ends my turn. <laughs> all right, pirate one is up next, which is the one that is in the doorway currently. All right, um, Pirate One, standing right next to uh, Ragnar there, pulls out a uh, sword and uh, slices and dices over there at poor little Ragnar and uh, manages to hit a couple of times and uh, does a little bit of damage, not too much, just uh, kind of hits you with a scimitar for a uh, total of 16 slashing damage. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and um, let me see here. Uh, would you roll a, a dexterity check, please? Uh, dex oh, no. check. Copy that. I will get right on it here. Not my strongest check. 20. Hey. All right. Uh, fortunately, nice. uh, even though he tried to trip you, also with that attack, you managed to uh, recover, and you're okay. Your cat-like reflexes have saved you from falling. Cats are really good uh-huh. at landing on all fours. And the uh, pirate ends its turn. All right, so we're back to the zombies. All right, the uh, zombies uh, that they have, uh, 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 the one has already uh, expended a uh, lovely worm. Uh, it's decided that it's going to just uh, simply attack now. It reaches out with its claw. It attacks. Pone, and it hits once with its claw and slices and dices, and it does 
A whopping 10 points of damage. Plus okay. seven necrotic damage. You said, uh, how much was it? Sorry, 10? 10 slashing and seven necrotic. Another zombie. That's the same amount of damage. Where's he at over there? Okay. He moves up to uh, Capone. It does the same amount of damage. And slashing. Okay. Double necrotic. Alrighty. And you still have the worm in you for it the next time, but you're in their turn. All right, and then uh, pirate number two, this one right here, is up next. All right, and this pirate um, kind of just stays back a little ways from the distant distance from the fight, and um, kind of doesn't really do a whole lot from the back end except for he uh, kind of just you know stands back in the distance and and doesn't really do much right now because uh, he's gonna just stand back and guard. Anyone else wondering what they're guarding? Is in this pantry. Yeah, there's got to be something crazy in this pantry. I, I wonder if it's delicious. a big box of twistos. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh. <laughs> Got full case. <laughs> oh no. Oh. I hear they do wonderful things for you. <laughs> All right. Next up is uh. Oops, sorry, faceless. Hmm. I'm gonna go to the left of uh, it? no, it's not red no, it's Ritson. And I'm gonna attack that pirate. What is that? Oh you wanna go up, up here? Okay. Yeah. Ragnar, yeah. Was there actually enough room for me to even to attack? You can squeeze in there. Give a little squeeze. And I want to swing my sword at him. Unhexed, of course. 21 to hit. 17 yeah. damage. And I want to swing yeah. again. At 24 to hit. And 12 damage. Right. And a little damage to hit. Is it? All right. Next up is Ragnar, right next to you. Okay, so I I'm a little thrown through a loop here because I thought that was an anti magic field. The vine whip worked through it. So maybe it's not anti magic. And I'm going to use this fancy thing that uh, I found out I had today because, you know, I know my character. And I am going to use my dual weapon fighting to throw two daggers at the pirate that attacked me. Nicely done. So... First dagger to hit is 21. Nice hit. With three damage. Second dagger Uh oh. Uh, 14 to hit. It hits. It does hit. Wow. Uh, and that will be an additional three damage. All right. Oh, no, four, four damage on both of those. I forgot. It's a plus one. All right. So it was eight damage total. That will end my turn. All right, RWA, you're up next. So it looks to me like he's not in that field. Is that correct, or is he in that field? 
not in the field. Can you hear me? Sorry, my. Yeah, I can hear you. Yep, he's he's not All in right, the field. Uh, Discord keeps not responding. He's not in the field. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna cast level two hold on him. Okay. It is a DC uh, DC sixteen to save wisdom. Yeah, that passes. Sorry, Keep getting kicked out. So he's held. Hit, sorry. And he is a paralyzed. Okay, I do my best Darth Vader impression holding him, and I yell out to the team, he's held, beat the crap out of him as soon as possible. And uh I will move I will move to the right of Ragnar. And that is my turn. Alright. So I'm up next. I'm going to stand up from this table. I'm going to look around and say thank you so much for removing that worm. I owe you one. I give him a little flash and show him that it's, uh, it's all clear. And I'm going to jump down onto here. And I, I think I'm feeling a little bit inspired by your Darth Vader move. So I'm going to cast Hedred's Hand, which is a level 5 spell. And Tedrid's hand allows me to do a couple things. Uh, it's a little bit more powerful than my mage hand. Uh, one of those things is to grasp someone. So I am going to cast my Tedrid's hand, which is this one over here. Ooh, I know it looks cool. And then uh, I'm going to use it to grasp pirate number one. Oh, sorry, they're already paralyzed. Uh, pirate number two. Uh, by the balls. And hold them there. <laughs> and uh, part of that grasp is uh, I use a strength score to re re resolve the grapple. Uh, if they're medium or small, then I have an advantage. When the hand is grappling, I can use a bonus action to crush it. Ooh, didn't read that part. Uh, when you do so, the target takes bludgeoning damage equal to 2d6 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit guilty about just grasping, so I'm not going to clench and crush just yet. I'm just going to keep them held by the balls and end my turn. And uh, next up is Capone. All right, so <clears throat> we have one. Uh, both of them are paralyzed or just the ones paralyzed? The pirates. One is paralyzed and one is being grasped by the balls. The one next to you is paralyzed and he yelled out, hit him. I've got him held right now. All right. And I uh, have an advantage. I'm kind of behind him. Okay. So I am going to uh, swing. And I did rage last turn. So I'm going to get three big boys on this guy. 24 to hit. With 16 damage. I'm going to do, do it again. Right. 16 to hit. Dice. It's an automatic crit if you hit him. Yeah. On this pirate here? Pirate yeah, one. the other guy. Yeah, the, the one that's paralyzed. Uh, 13 damage. Okay. And then... The crit. There we go. Not 20, so 28. And... 28 damage. All right. Your axe did some major damage there. All right. And that is the end of my turn. Nicely okay. done. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so next up is uh, Kala. So, so at the, par the paralyzed one, I want to go up and hit him with my, or actually, no, do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shillelagh. Ooh, with him. what's that? I'm hit him with, like, basically hitting with my quarter staff, but like with a, it's a little bit stronger. So Nice. I'm going to go up right. next to him. Not too close, just close enough. And roll this dice and 12. Does that hit? Um, no, not quite. Okay. Close, but not quite. 
Do I get a sec? I think I do. Question, was she supposed to have an advantage on that because it's paralyzed? Good point. Um, let me check for sure. I'd say go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, th I think it is. I think it is. It's, it's crit on the other ones. I think it was. It's, it's just good advantage on that. Does okay. advantage mean reroll? Yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead, just reroll. Okay. Hits? 27? Yeah, that's Let's go. Crazy. That's how you do it. <laughs> Alright. And then... Let's make it crit damage. damage. It's 10. Yeah. Alright. Definitely and then, hurt. Perfect. Okay, then I'm going to kind of wander backwards. Back a little bit away from him. I don't want to be touched. <laughs> In a roll. All right, and I look over at Cal and I say, "Yo, you were in that uh that furry room too. I know that we we think the worms were from here, but you might just want to check yourself just to be sure." And uh, uh okay. <laughs> okay. And uh Redsome, you're up next. All right. Uh I'm going to head on over to that pirate and I'm going to start smacking the heck out of him. All right. Go for Let's it. See. Nice little that definitely 20. smacked. Oh, and keep him another one. Nice. Okay. Don't forget it's crit damage since he's held. Yep. I'm going to use a Fury of Blows for my bonus action and uh, give him another uh, two strikes. Right. Oh, yeah. Ooh, you have pounded him. That was a crit. That was good. Nicely done. That one hit as well. Yeah, if you right click, you can make it a crit damage. All right. And uh, with that, you see that the uh, pirate has a kind of just, you know, all of a sudden just collapsed onto the ground. And you see, oh, oh, as it, it's hit, hit in the head just one too many times. And it pounds and it just falls to the ground. Nice. Let's go. Head in the ground. If you run, just a heads up, if you right click the damage that you're doing, it'll give you the crit option. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's what I did uh, for, for that last one. True, yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, with that, uh, Pirate One is is dead or incapacitated. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's gone. It's dead. Okay. All right. So I'll remove that. And uh, next up is the zombies. All right. Well, the zombies, you know, are standing there, and they start, you know, shipping out, sending out, you know, this like little worms, like starting to just be be flung out again from this, these zombies. You see one all of a sudden just land itself right onto Retsum's boot hole over there. And then you see another one that's kind of gets, you know, kind of off in the corner. And this other one kind of get flung off and uh, land over there on, um, who else is in the pantry there? Sorry, I can't see at the moment. It's, uh, it looks like okay. faceless. Anybody else over there? Yeah, faceless is boot hole. <laughs> right there. The two of them now have uh, worms crawling on their boot hole. <laughs> well, do they know I slightly enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> A nice meal afterwards. No, just kidding. Because you love to eat bugs. <laughs> yum, yum. I was kind of expecting you to use your beak on me, but it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. Is that the end of the zombie's turn? That's the end of the zombie's turn. All right. Next up is uh, Pirate 2. All right. Pirate 2 is just going to stand there and guard. Man, what is over there? Maybe, maybe. Well, I have Pirate 2's balls grasped with my Tedrid's hand. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. You okay. basically control him, yeah. Yeah, but maybe they're into it. <laughs> 
Could be. Mm -hmm. yeah, he looks satisfied. Party. That's a good point. <laughs> it's that kind of party, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, it is uh, Faceless up next. And just so everyone knows, I didn't have a Worms status marker on hand, so I'm using Hunter's mark as the Worms. Yeah, indicator. we get it. We get it. Okay. So I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, I'm going to move and scoot on in next to Capone on the right. And I'm going to swing my sword at that first zombie. Uh, that'll Okay. 27 to hit 11 damage and one also hit okay. and 13 damage right and that's in the it's very badly hurt now so all right, and uh, next up is Ragnar. And by the All way, right. the, the worm is uh, now burrowing into your rear end pretty strongly, and it does one point of damage. So, um, question about these worms. Are they still uh, exposed? Yeah, they haven't fully, you know, gone in yet, except for, you know, Capone's is uh, burrowing in pretty deep, but the others are just now kind of gotten... In there. So Capone's is not exposed? Uh, maybe the little tip of the worm is still out. I, I can't imagine these have uh, that tremendous of hit points. So I am going to cast first level magic missile at the three worms. Whoa, 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 the one in my butt? Yeah. yeah you're about to get missile in the butt. Uh, whoa, let's talk about this. I... <laughs> Listen, uh... Well, I it's know... a bit late. All the worms will yeah. now take You don't even one, know. 1d4 plus 1 damage. You don't Listen, even know this is coming. I'm okay uh, with playing around in other people's butts, but when it comes to my butt, I'm a little... I'm a little defensive. <laughs> this is called uh, this is called not consensual. You don't even know what's coming. <laughs> Ragnar, I didn't uh, put a finger in your butt, man. That wasn't me. I was just minding my business. Look, do you want to get rid of your butt worm or not? <laughs> At this point, I think I'd rather the butt worm than a magic missile in my butt. Uh, it's five points of force damage to all of the worms. You better it's believe it's five preference. points oh, of force, force damage. damage to his butt? <laughs> you better oh, believe yeah. it's five points of force <laughs> damage. I want to oh, watch this. The worms are dead. <laughs> Very um, interesting. Uh, all of you, the rest of you, uh, take a, uh, oh no, a, a, a deck, do a dex deck save. Oh, See if you can everybody? To, to move your booty patootie out of the way before this missile hits you the rest of the way. It does some major damage. That would be uh, worms. Faceless, uh, Retsum, and Capone. I got a. Yeah. I got an eleven. <laughs> I have a plus eight in dex, and I end up this. with an eleven. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, actually. Oh, red. I'm taking a red. mental no, note. I'm worms free. I'm taking Ted a mental red. note, and when I have time, I'm going to put in my me medical journal about how to remove worms efficiently. <laughs> it's in your database. I uh, I rolled a six, and I'm very clenched. All right. Right well, now. uh. Pixels managed to uh, avoid any damage, but uh, unfortunately, Redsum and Capone need to work on their, uh, their, you know, their, you know, booty dances and uh, being able to avoid damage from uh, magic missiles being shot at them. So they also take uh, another four damage from these uh, magic missiles. Maybe okay. RWA can teach you guys some meditation techniques so you can learn how to unclench. So because of <laughs> evasion and because it's a deck save... I actually only take half of that, I guess, since I failed. Yeah. Cool. You're able to get a little, you know, a booby, also, booby booby there, it there, get out of the way. Now that uh, y'all got your booties clapped, uh, I end my turn. <laughs> All right, and with that, it's RWA. I definitely got clapped. <laughs> okay, so so the worms are gone out of the people infected. 
Yes, they're gone. Okay. All right. So I make sure I was reading that right. <laughs> I'm still. It's a. It's a medical marvel right now that I'm pro- trying to process. So I will. Uh, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move into combat right next. If I can sneak in between Capone and Faceless, or to the right of Capone, whichever way is logistically possible, to the damaged zombie. Yeah, you can swing in between them. It's close quarters right now, but you should be able to hit them. This is within five feet. Kira, can I can I hit the damaged zombie? Yeah, with you my mace. Yeah, you should okay. be able to grab it. I'm going to swing my mace, and as I do it, I'm going to trigger radiant damage on my mace. Okay. One second. Let me pull it up here. All right, here's the roll. That is a 15. Does that hit? Yes, it hits. Okay. And I got two different damages here. Okay, so... Five from regular damage, and then I have to roll a D8 for Radiant. Okay, did that roll? Uh, didn't oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. Nice. Eight, All right. eight, eight Radiant damage and five regular. All right. Let's go. Nice job. Good amount of damage. That's good. All right. That's my turn. All right. Nicely done. Uh, so for Tedrid's turn... Um, I think uh, I'm getting a little bit sketched out by why Pirate uh, 2 is not reacting to my grip. So I'm going to clench. And so what that means is uh, if I crush, then the target takes bludgeoning damage equal to 2d6. So I will roll 2d6. Right there. And this is a bonus action. This counts as a bonus action. Uh, so I'll do my bonus action first. That'll be nine damage on the pirate of uh, ball clenching damage, specifically. And uh, next, for my main attack, I will use Vicious Mockery. So I'm just going to start stringing a load of insults at the pirate. Like, ha, your, your balls are small. And then uh, and they yeah, take... the field is dissipated by now. The the field is gone. So okay. Uh, let's get rid of those. Um, so I tell them that their balls are small, and they take one d four psychic damage and are disadvantaged on their next turn. So that and is a, a three. An unlimited emotional damage. Oh yeah, yeah you're like body shaming people right yeah. now. Yeah, I'm scarring them for life. So that's three damage, and they take disadvantage on their next turn, and that's the end of my turn. So next up is Capone. All right, so I'm going to take my first uh, turn here, and I'm going to attack the zombie there, the one that's almost dead. I think I believe he's almost dead. And uh, we're going to swing at this bad boy. Uh, 24 to hit. I believe that's a hit. And we are going to swing. Oof, we're, we're going to do 10 damage. Is he still alive? Barely, barely still alive. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do with my second with my second attack, I'm actually going to move uh, and go behind uh, Ragnar. I'm just going to walk behind Ragnar, and I'm just going to take the butt end of my axe just to just to make sure. Oh, yeah, I'm not the, sure if you guys need the zombie uh, is attacking you as you head out, also, and uh, opportunity attack because you walked away from him. And um, with that. You also take another um, small amount of damage, not much. Just a very short um, 10 slashing damage and 7 necrotic damage. All right, so 17 damage, no problem. So now I'm going to sit here, I'm going to stand behind Ragnar, and I don't want to hurt him too much, but I want to make sure he's just free of worms, just to be safe. So I'm going to take the butt end of my axe, where that skull is, and I'm just going to just fish it up there a little bit. Just I just want to help him out a little bit, just check it out, check the area. And I'm just gonna shove the butt in, just in his, just in his butthole a little bit. Just, uh, I'm doing, I'm doing you a, a favor here. Uh, just, I'm looking out for you, my friend. So yeah, I'm just gonna shove the butt into my of circumciser there, just straight in his butt's hole, just enough to, just to, just enough to, you know, let him know I'm there. You know. It's always you're, nice to check, friend. For yeah, you're, worms. you're not a licensed doctor. I'm gonna have to report you. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'm trying to do him a favor here, so I'm just gonna just, just, just the tip in there. Just, just wiggle it around a little bit. 
Are you using lube or no lube? There is no none left. No. Ooh. Okay. All right. Just making sure. And uh, that will be my turn. All right. Kala is up next. After witnessing that. Uh yeah, as I'm standing right behind watching this occur, um, I decide to walk over on the other side and get a you know get away from the full frontal of the show. Even though it's very interesting, you know. I encourage Kala to nuke him. We can take it. Do you think we could take it if I go go in there and uh? Light him up, right. baby. Light him up. Do all your right. Thing. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk into the room since since the magical field is things gone, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh just give a full uh full thunderclap on everybody. Or I'm sorry, on the bad guys. <laughs> it's the first slip. Just the slip. <laughs> I think it's gonna hit everyone, but yeah. All right, so 20, 24 damage on all and everybody. And what do we roll again? It's a dex the save. Dex? Con. Con, Con save. Okay. Is that yeah. literally everybody or everybody in that room? This is a uh, close quarters it? battle. I would think in that I would think in that room Five, you guys 15. got you guys got cover behind that wall. Do you get does cover work on uh thunderclaps? I guess cuz the sound doesn't directly hit these three? Yeah, I guess so. I think I'm so still... yeah. Okay. A so bit. I think it'll be myself, RWA, and Faceless, as well as the three enemies will roll con saves uh, looking for 16. The uh, pirate is unaffected, but the other the other one is, 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 is affected, obviously, the other zombies, and the zombies are gone. Ooh. Nice. Wipe the zombies. Nice. And uh, so if we roll the, if we, if we met the save, do we take half damage? Is that how it works? Um, so it be 12. I took, yeah, full, I took full I'll damage. Save it half. Yeah. Okay. So I take 12 and then uh, RWA and faceless take 24. So does that affect the pirate? Oh, the pirate is, was unaffected. So is he really there, guys? Do you think the pirate's actually there? He grabbed a hold of his nutsack. I mean, he feels like he's there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let me just let me just wiggle my fingers a little bit. Yeah, no, I think I think so. I'm not sure All if right. pirates are real, guys. Who are pirates? Yeah, I think maybe they heard my pirate joke. Maybe they just want to hear it. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe they heard my pirate joke and. Maybe we're all just misunderstood here. Maybe this whole situation could have been avoided, you know? <laughs> Worms and assholes and stuff, you know? It could have been avoided. You know, that's usually what happens with us. <laughs> all right. Is that the end of your turn? Oh, yeah. Everything. I'm good to go. Thanks. All right. So next up is Retsum. All right. So we've got just this one... Just this one pirate left, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, can I even get into this room here? From uh, it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but yeah, you I think you we're can good. move through. I I'm pretty sure you can move through friendly people, not enemies, though. All right. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll get up on in there next to this guy. And he's not been reacting to much that you guys have done to him so far. So uh. Let's uh let's just try smacking some sense into him and uh give him a couple hits with uh Roosevelt. Oh, that's a nat one. <laughs> yeah. He is he is not affected. Alright, let's uh try it again. <laughs> okay, nineteen. Okay. Managed to uh to shoot at him and you see that there's like nothing there. Oh. Oh, I think oh. I was on to something. Yeah, you, pirates I aren't you real, were. guys. Pirates are fake. <laughs> pirates are fake. Pirates are fake. <laughs> okay. So, he's not really there. But everybody else is gone, so why is he still here? And we are still fighting. He's just standing there. You see him standing there? He's just standing there guarding something. Can I ask get, him to move? 
yeah, can I get past him? Can I just be like, excuse me, sir? <laughs> Seems to be unaffected, but maybe you could, uh, I don't know, convince him to move? Oh, I'll try a little persuasion. Here's the only problem. I'm a minus one. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me, Sarah, could you please move? Let's, uh, oh, 15. Oh, and with that, the, uh, the illusory pilot, pirate kind of just kind of moves his butt and he moves over. He kind of moves out of the way and oh. opens and leaves the pantry. Oh, free and clear. Oh, okay. So, uh, what was he? What, a, what a, that is the first pirate pacifist I have ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he really who knew, was right who knew that was him? an option? We could have just asked them to, to leave. <laughs> we were all misunderstood. See, we're all misunderstood. <laughs> Yeah, well, incorporate that in combat. <laughs> Can you guys please leave before we fight? <laughs> just, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I think we gotta try that next time. All right, should we check out? Uh, I guess yeah, move this hand out of the way. Should we uh, check out what they were hiding or what they were yeah. protecting? Are we still in combat? Oh, you are no longer in combat. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna be uh, tending to people, healing people up while people search around. Uh, I'll roll a perception. Say... It's uh, not very perceptive. It's only a nine. All right. You do see that there are several several different um, pantry cabinets here, and some of them are quite quite empty. And those are the ones that you happen to have opened. <laughs> I found nothing, guys. All right. I will then, uh, I guess, look in the other cabinets that uh, Ragnar has not looked in. Left. <laughs> I'll put you in front of me. Does anyone else want to uh, take a look at the pantry? Yeah, I'll take um, a Sure. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go, no, you go. You go. Should I roll a perception? I'm gonna roll one. See if we can get anything else. I got 19. Okay, you open up the uh, far left pantry that you kind of see that he was kind of guarding over there, and you see that there are uh, there were three bottles sitting there. One is red, one is white, one is blue. Some Ooh. liquid in it, each one. Oh. Well. Could this represent the three sisters? Perhaps. Oh, good memory. Ooh. That's a, yeah. And uh, I'm going to put, take all of them. Mine. Any Do we know? Was, what were the colors again? Sorry. Red, white, blue. Okay, thanks. Uh, Do we know anything about these? Before we go hiding them. Um can uh roll and see if you know anything perhaps maybe arcana see if perhaps you can determine if there anything is anything special about them okay i got a 14. well you do notice that they are indeed some sort of uh potions of some sort or uh you know magical elixirs of potions or or some sort of, uh, you know, similar items of that sort. Should we roll a secondary arcana? It's for more, for like, it. idea? Why don't you do it? Just do it. Yeah, I'll try. All right, arcana, I have a plus 10, so I'm going to roll that. Oh, Jesus, you have a plus 10? Yeah, I've been holding out. All right, we got 16. All right. Well, you uh, determine that, you know, some of these items are probably uh, of use. All of them are probably of use. But um, you don't know specifically what types of, of potions they are. But you do know that they would be of some sort of use to you, um, possibly. But you don't know if they are of um, use in a positive way or use in a negative way. 
This sounds like a twist. As in one may be poison, one may be good. They all might be poison. They all might be good. You don't know. Like a is twist, there, twist. Is there enough to exactly. test? Ooh, nice, nice, Kayla. I could be the guinea pig if you need. I mean, I've been screwed a couple times already by these. So if you, <laughs> if you guys want, I could taste them. We can hold on to them. Um, I think we should just hold on to them as much as I would love for you to taste them. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I look at them? Is there any medicinal properties that I would be able to curtail off of these by looking at them? Um, no, not in particular. Okay. I think it's pretty safe uh, to leave them in my hands. Knowing one of you, you'll accidentally drink it. <laughs> I definitely would. I uh, patched up Coops and, or I'm sorry, oh gosh, I patched up Ted Red and Capone. If anybody else needs healing, let me know in uh, Discord. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, do you want to uh, move along and see what else you can find? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sounds you want good. To take, these, take these potions with me. I mean, I thought there would be Twistos in here for sure, like a box or two. I think, I think maybe they're liquid Twistos. I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards that. All right, where should we head next? So the rooms that we haven't checked out are this one right here. Uh this one right here. This one and this one. And then there is also a path through here that we haven't been to yet. Maybe that's where we should go last though. Head red, pick one and let's go. All right. We will start Let's just go in order. So we're going to check out this room filled with wood first. All right. You see that there are some uh, tables here. Looks like it's uh, pretty empty other than that. Just some tables. Okay. Uh, next one I'm going to check out is the potty room. Ah, well, other than, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a little couple of turds in the toilet, you don't see much. Party goers, okay. you know? <laughs> Probably a lot of people who puked in there too. Uh, we'll check out this room. Ah, okay. This is a nice little storage area. You know, you got a few things in here. It's just kind of little, um, you know, boxes and assorted uh, sundry things, but uh, not a whole lot worth looking at, I guess. And uh, this room. Ah, the bedroom. You see there's some pretty nice paintings on the wall of this bedroom. It's really kind of fancy schmancy. Would anyone like to search the paintings? Yes. All right, what RWA, nap? come on in. All right, I'll put Kala taking a nap, and RWA, you search the uh, painting. Yeah, and do swell. Only an eight. Yeah, they just look kind of like, you know, art that you're not very impressed with. You seem better. <laughs> Would anyone else like to check them out? Nope. Uh, I'll, I'll throw an investigation on it, I guess. All right. Uh, I'm not going to investigate nothing. Eight. <laughs> yeah, they also just kind of look like boring paintings to you, too, you know. Mostly just, you know, a bunch of women, for the most part, elves. Okay. Let's move to the next room. All right. Oh, uh, but wait. You do notice one that's kind of like a little bit kind of catty-cornered, odd. Oh, I will... I'll investigate that one with a 16. All right. One in particular is a little bit kind of hung a little bit odd and it's kind of, you know, maybe a little bit to, to, to the, to the, to off to the side, a little bit catty cornered. Look, notice it's a portrait of a female elf merchant and it's in a wooden frame and it's engraved with some kind of odd runes. But um, once you look at the back, you notice it's kind of got an S on the back. Oh, so we got TV oh. and S now. We got TVs. T oh, multiple TVs. Nice. Ooh. 
the right. the the lady was a merchant, you said? Yeah, yeah, it's just an elf merchant. Anything that catches my eye in regards to Kol Karan, since he is like the deity of merchants? Not particularly, although, you know, you have heard word that perhaps, you know, the uh, lady um, Vario that, you know, is in charge of this particular party has it had, had a kind of a, you know, a thing for merchants in the past. Oh, OK. Does the lady in this painting look familiar to us at all? Not particularly. But you do notice that the S kind of stands out to you in that uh, perhaps it is the initial of some sort. Maybe belonging to a name. First initial of a name. So S is the first initial and then VT or TV. If Cindy with an S pops out anywhere, I will, <laughs> I will run. We a Victor. That's what we do. <laughs> we have Victor right away. Right away. <laughs> I feel like we're say, just re reliving your entire trauma through this campaign. <laughs> I was going to say Soleil Variel, but there's no T in that, so I don't know. Oh, well, you start to, you know, as you're standing there, you know, you kind of, uh, um, let's just see, uh, how about uh, Ragnar roll a um, an intelligence check? Uh, check, not a save. Oh, check. Copy that on its way. That's a nat 20 for 24. Right. Oh, well, you start to remember in your head and you kind of remember back and you sort of remember in, in, in some of the lore that you've learned as a kid. That uh, that there were there were three sisters. There were Vario sisters. In the legends, um, not just one, but three. Soleil was one, but there were two others also. And that these three uh, sisters shared one single body. So was the uh, the host of this party? Was that one of the sisters, and was that their body? You were invited to this party, or, well, you came to this party to get invitation as Soleil Vario, who you presume is the uh, lady you met. All right, so that is their body, then, I assume. Uh, so that means that uh, we hopefully met the nicest of the sisters, or, sorry, the, the meanest of the sisters, so that, you know, all the other ones will be nice, but we have no way of knowing, I guess. Right. I have a feeling so, when we go to sleep, we're going to find out what's going there, on. There was an S in her name, obviously, the uh, initial, and then there are two other initials. So you presume, therefore, that those initials may refer to the other sisters and their names. Right. So Cindy. <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> Why am I getting Big Brother vibes off these names for some reason? And I don't even know anything about it. So, so it's Cindy, Victoria, and Taryn Armstrong. <laughs> right. We have all three names. Uh, if, if we find a K, a K <laughs> you're <Cindy. laughs> Kevin Jacobs. <laughs> Uh, see, I was thinking that if we found a K, we'd all get paranoid. <laughs> and we would be under the paranoia condition. <laughs> yeah, I thought if we found a K that we'd all, you know, just be the, you know, be the best because, you know, it'd be Kiefer. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we're all both different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Moving Should we check out these uh, last two rooms? There's two more left. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm away. All right. Yeah, let's crush them. Up. All right. Um, head on into the bedroom first. All right. You head into the small bedroom and you see that there is a uh, a chest to the side of the bed. And that's pretty much all that's in there. Just a chest and a bed. 
Can we open the chest? Yeah, is it locked? Sure, you can try to open the chest. Alright, yeah, I'll try and open the chest. Get it, Ratsum. I'm just right. gonna take my quarter staff and just kinda try and yank it open. <laughs> okay. Roll the dex check. Uh oh. This is where we need a crowbar. Uh, uh -oh. actually, we do have a crowbar. I got a 10. Um, okay. All right. I am specialized in lockpicking, so uh, do you want me to try lockpick it? Oh, if you sure. can. You can pop this puppy open. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Eight. That's a specialty. I thought you said you specialized in this. I am <laughs> a specialist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what do I have to roll to crack this thing with a crowbar? Roll a strength check. Oh, great. Me and my whopping plus zero. What? Why don't we give the crowbar to our muscle dude? Well, hold on, I got a 15 here. Hey! Oh, all right. right! You're able to, like, you know, wedge the crowbar in, and you, like, kind of pop it open, and all of a sudden, this chest just kind of bust open, and you kind of see just a bunch of, you know, mostly random junk, but you do see one item that kind of looks, you know, kind of interesting to you. It's just like a... And you also see some... some you see something interesting that you didn't think you would see in there. It's kind of weird that you noticed it there. There's a little bit of uh, moon dust in this, along with like a, a small, a small ring, and and some moon dust and some exactly. maybe even like like a like a, a a dragon scale. It's kind of a little bit black, kind of a blackish kind of color. Oh, can I? Can I... The cock ring. Yeah, cock ring. Can I uh, use an arcana check on the ring? Yes, you can. Oh, it's used. Uh, I mean, probably it's a ring in a chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fourteen. Yeah, you do discover that there is something, something different, something magical about this ring. So, this it, it is a bit, you know, special, I guess. Faceless, can you identify that, please? Oh, special ring. Does it vibrate? Um, would that be a magic to take? To identify it? Yeah, you gotta identify uh, it to tell us what it is. Can I exactly. do uh, uh, magic to take on the ring, please? Great. So you hold the ring in your hand, you kind of move it around, you kind of see it just kind of glows a little bit. Notice that it is a ring of acid resistance. Ooh. Oh. Acid resistance. If there's one person I know who likes to get naked and jump into acid, it's Capone. I feel like we should give this one to Capone. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking the same thing. Nice. Same wavelength. I think uh, he's I mean, got I, one. I think he's got one, doesn't he? Let's find out. Uh, he may have a ring, but I don't think it's acid protection. I think, uh, depending on the size of the ring, I think he could fit two on, uh, on his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. I mean, he could have one one for each uh, berry. Hey, if, listen, if it doesn't fit around the circumference, because you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could always go for a piercing. I we knocked don't... over a cauldron and we got something out of there a while ago, and it was acid resist. And I thought he took it. It's been no, a minute though. Me. Nope. Or did I haven't he just had not any drops yet. in his system. <laughs> Which is very possible. <laughs> Most likely. The he probably fish. lost it. He, right. he had it, but then he we dropped it We got a replacement. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we have one again. <laughs> All right. So this needs to be logged into your inventory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have, yeah, I don't have a, a, a ring. I don't have a ring of this sort. So that would be, does anybody else want it? Anybody else want to wear it? No. Uh, I am going to pass on that. I think I have enough items for now. Yeah, I think used cock ring has your name written all over it. I would definitely love a used cock ring, actually. I'd, yeah. I wouldn't mind wearing that. Okay, I will definitely wear that. It's a little loose on me, but uh, I'll grow <laughs> into it, you know? I'll grow into it. it. Keep in mind, it halves acid damage. Okay. What? No, it's acid protection. I thought it was a resistance. 
resistance. I thought it just vibrated. Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> when acid touches it, it vibrates. In the, it vibrates. Uh, really, it, sensations go up. So the, game. the black dragon scales are just dragon scales. It's not like a piece of armor or anything. No, no they're just black dragon scales. All right. Somebody take Can... those. Make sure you know yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, make I'll sure take add one. That put, to it in, put it in my little, the... my little bag. Uh, Retzum, you're taking the dragon scales. Sure. Uh, how many dragon scales is he taking? Uh, there are three dragon scales there. Okay. I'll take one if you want to take two. No, no, no you can carry all three. If anybody finds you, the need you... for some dragon scales, just holler. It, you called dibs on them. All right, sweet. I love uh, should squirrel. we check? <laughs> Lover squirrel, nice. Uh, should we uh, head into the final room and check this one out? Yeah, let's let's bust down the last room, I guess. All right, and then after that, we got a path over this way that we can check out. All right. So in this room, you kind of see just little, uh, you know, kind of a ritual-looking room, and that maybe there have been some uh, some rituals going on in here, and uh, probably some 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 dirty deeds, but. Um, I'll do a religion check, please. Okay. Gosh. Never mind. Three. Oh, you don't you don't know as much, but you do but um you do kind of see that uh you know for some reason Faceless does kind of recognize us to a degree. It it looks somewhat familiar to him as as being um sort of a religious area for a, a blood of all kind of, you know, religious ceremonies. Ooh. Oh, take place um, here. So, can I do an insight? Is it insight onto it? Ryan, I want to do a religion check. Yeah, religion check. On religion. Uh, five. <laughs> Not quite intelligent. Yeah, well, you, you notice, like I said, you just see it kind of looks somewhat familiar to what you're from, you know, of from your religion. Um, and that, you know, it, it, it looks similar to some things that you had learned um, in the past, but it also is a little slightly different. It's like, you know, these these are a little bit more of the, the darker sides of the Blood of all, And um, maybe, you know, some things that probably you you know, were, were warned about not to get involved in, maybe in, in your past. Um, some of the darker sides of, of your religion. Okay, so I've heard two things. One is that there were dirty deeds done in this room, which instantly makes me think of semen. And the other was that it's the blood of fall, which is blood. So I would like to do a black light check. Uh, can I roll an investigation? Yes. All right, my black light check. I got 16. Well, you, you know those those hotel rooms, like the Motel 6, like the really, really, really seedy ones? Not not even Motel 6 level, but like the ones that you like, you know, are like below the level of Motel 6. That's kind of what you would expect when you look at the black, black, at this room through the black light. Like just, 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 you know, nastiness everywhere. Just lit the whole room up. Yeah. Motel 3 style. Yeah, okay. Light. Yeah. So I say that was actually really insightful and creative what you did, but it does not imply to D and D at all. But whatever, kudos to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a warforged. I got a black light somewhere in here. Yeah. All right. Anything else of uh, value in this room? No. Sanitizer. All right. I do need some hand sanitizer for some point. As for all four yeah. of my hands. Yeah. You might want to, might want to go to the bathroom and clean up. Just yeah on the way so we got a path out here um heading down this way but on our way out i'm just gonna run to the bathroom and just kind of wash up a little bit <laughs> and should we head down the uh to the next area sure let's go all right should i bring that up here yeah all right oh this is religious looking. Not oh, spooky. You walk into this really just I mean this place is like really, really creepy. But um it's kinda cool, but creepy. And um and you kinda see the you know graveyard out in the back and you kinda see this this little 
area in the room over there in the, in the far distance there that you can can enter into. And you kind of hear uh, some strange uh, music kind of playing in the uh, the background. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's not like creepy it. at all. I don't like it. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, that is terrifying. All right. Um, if I see do, a small red-headed thing running towards me, I'm punting it. Do we go through the door on the right or the one in front of us? I guess we should check out this little building first, right? I mean, it's a little closer. Uh, you can go first. You can go first. All right, let's go check it out. I'll go in. I'll kick it open. I'm at, we'll on, the, before you go, hey, right. oh, slow down, slow down. I'm going to cast up? Freedom of Movement on Capone. It's a fourth level spell. It lasts for an hour. Okay. What is that? What is it? It uh, For the next hour, you can't be paralyzed. Uh, uh, target's move is unaffected by difficult terrain and spells and other magical effects that can reduce the target's speed and cause the target to be paralyzed or restrained. All right, beauty. Well, thank you, sir. And I'm going to go kick in this door. Maybe I'll just try opening it nicely. How about that? Let's just open <laughs> it with the, with the door handle. Let's just open it nicely. All right. You open the door and you come in. You see this kind of crypt-looking area, and you see a, a kind of a coffin spot over there in the end, the end of the, at the end of the room, and it, uh, it appears to be uh, empty. Okay, well, that was the. That's that. All right, so let's uh, move along then. Bust down these doors or open them nicely. We'll open them gently and politely. All right. Okay, you walk into what appears to be kind of this, uh, I don't know, chapel area, so to speak, and it's uh, got some, uh, um, you know, little floor tiles on it, and it's got some benches and. Um, at the very end over there, you see a uh, lady Vario, and you also see a couple of uh, of other assistants with her. And um, as she's standing over there, she kind of looks, you know, a bit disturbed that you have, have interrupted her. And um, and so she's like looking at you um, with this kind of like you know I don't know non happy look on her face, and. Uh, she pulls out this the small hollow jade coin. Uh, Tedred, would you please make a wisdom save? I got a nine. All right, and as um, she pulls out this hollow coin and and she points it at uh, Tedred, and all of a sudden, it disappears. Wait, what? No uh, longer there. What? What? This was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are, are, are gone. You are, you see, you see all of a sudden as you're, you kind of just see the vague essence of, uh, of you kind of just, just kind of disappear. Your soul just kind of vanishes. And you don't even what know. It's the... just it's gone. Holy shit. Um, see you later. No. I mean, I mean, you know, what? Very Sorry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I meant to say, what I meant to say was, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone needs to uh roll for initiative now because uh lovely yeah. lady is is is, un is very unhappy uh -oh. Damn, i guess except missing, for me we're missing our except incredible you, bard. you are you are gone but not forgotten i got 20 like for, for good <laughs> So Kira, can I still see his form, but even though it's not there? Nope. He is he is in he would be in the essence of somewhere else. Like not even here, anywhere in this area, anywhere in this entire I want a thunderclap and fetch. Uh I got a three. And the lady rolled eleven and her companions rolled sixteen and nineteen. Okay, so first up will be faceless, and then I'll type out everyone else. Uh, I'm gonna cast Hexblade on her, on the main chick. 
and I'm just going to rush in there and give her what's up. Oh, oh, you're rushed in? Okay. Roll a uh, dexterity check. Oh, shit. Oh, gosh. That didn't oh, sound too good. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> oh, you rushed in, eh? Yeah. yeah. Ah, so as you step on one of the uh, lovely plates there in the in the uh, on there, you uh, you notice that it is uh, now fallen. It's like it's disappeared from from below you, and like you've fallen down into a pit. Uh, can I activate my wing boots to um, prevent me from falling and hover back to safety? Next next turn, you can. Right now, you are. Uh, or in a pit of blood underneath the ground. A pit oh. of blood. Because the floor has fallen below what you. What the? F- mm. You what did not catch yourself in time. To... You didn't see it coming. Okay. Uh... All right. Dodge the black one. <laughs> don't yet. Yeah, don't step on, on the squares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right, so uh, enemy one is up next, so that would be the one on the left here. All right. Enemy one, all of a sudden you see the uh, enemy uh, all of a sudden transforms into the form of a bat and flies over toward. First one it hits over there. Sorry, I can't see the map. Can you... uh... Zoom out a little yeah, bit. Sorry, I was typing out the. That's okay. Uh, so it'd be right. uh, if if faceless is in here, yep. then it's uh, Capone or Ragnar, I think. Or flies over to Capone, and um, immediately starts to attack. And one attack Bring hits. Oh. Takes eight damage. And um, ends its turn. And uh, enemy two is up next. All right. It also flies over, turns to a bat, flies over, and attacks Capone, and does another eight damage. Okay. I'm going to remember this. All right. uh, Retsum is up next. Okay. Uh, So let's see what we got going on here. We've got these two two people here who are attacking everybody. Um, I guess what I'll do is, because I don't want to step on the ground, I will fly uh over everybody's head here and try and get like in front of the pit where where faceless is and then uh I'll shoot at uh that closest one to me with good old peacemaker 17 to hit yeah it did okay does a little 15 damage there. And then I'll give a, a little smack with Roosevelt. Oh, 25. Uh, and then what I'll do is I will use a key point to do another flurry of blows. Give another two swipes here. Ooh, 24. And then one more. Uh, 16. There we go. Okay. And that would end my turn. All right. Next up is uh, Lady Vario. All right. Lady Vario kind of glares at all of you. And um, immediately... I cast this lovely spell and uh, sends a lovely cloud over toward um, the group over there. And um, everybody needs to do a con save. Uh-oh. Do I being in the pit below? No, <laughs> you don't. Oh. Everyone else. 
I say good. Twelve. Thirteen for RWA. Kyle, I got a fifteen. Yeah, I think that's everyone. Okay. Looks like um all is fine. And Capone is okay. Retsum, Ragnar. Both of you are going to take uh, 20 points of poison damage. Ooh, Vesta, uh, you are going to take half of that. So here's... Unless here's you have uh, some sort of poison resistance. Yeah, I have a immune to poison. Yeah. So do I take anything? No. Cool. Immune, you don't take anything. Whew. Do I take... I take half or I'm okay? You have poison resistance or poison immunity? I don't think so. So it'd be half because you rolled over the save, yeah. I think. And then uh, also RWA, I think. Uh, if you're a Warforged like me, then you have uh, poison resistance. I have advantage on it, and I already made my save, so I'll just take the ah. 10 points. Okay. And is that so, the end of... Uh, sorry. Retsum, Retsum and Ragnar took 20, and everyone else took 10. Uh, Retsum is immune to poison. Yeah. Oh, my bad. So Sorry. I took 20. Everyone else took 10. And um, she ends her turn. All right. Come on, All it's right. your turn. I'm going in. I'm going to uh, re-rage here. Am I still I'm not raging anymore, so I'm going to re-rage here. Um... And one sec here. And we are going to attack the one that's been hit. Yikes. A nine. Nat one. That did not hit, for sure. That's my third nat one tonight. All right, let's try again. 16 to hit. That one barely hit. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, with uh, 16 points of damage. Mm. And that will be my turn. All right. Next up is RWA. Did the cloud dissipate or is it still lingering? It is lingering and it is moving kind of away, like towards further back. It's moving further back, about 10 feet from where it was before. Okay. I am going it's, to... This area is also heavily obscured, by the way. All right. I am going to cast level three bless. Everyone except for Kala is going to have plus four to their attacks and plus four to their saves. And then I'm going to try to move to the left of Ragnar and like not fall into the gaping hole. Just move over to that side. All right. And that is my turn. So everybody has plus four attacks, plus four to save, except for Kayla right now. All right. And uh, Cal is up next. All oh, right. So I'm actually going to throw uh, a flaming Saphir at the bitch in the back. Okay. And I'm just going to encircle her with it and uh, just her. Hit her with 16 damage. It is a deck save of 16, so I don't know. She passed with her. She saved. She saved? Yeah. Ugh. Good shot. Well, she at least takes half damage from it. Yep. Um, okay, and then I think that's it for me. All right, Ragnar is up next. All right. Um, how far away is Soleil from us? Probably, let's see. Let me take a look at the map again real quick. About 45. Yeah. 45 feet. Yeah. 45 feet. And I have direct line of sight at her. 
Well, yeah. you're heavily obscured right now, so it's kind of moving away from you, though. So you get a little bit. Okay. Okay. Here. Can Basically. I move forward? If you move forward a slight bit, you can probably see her. Can I move forward to like the second pew on the left? Like, is that possible? Mm, one more up. On the black, as long as you don't move on the black ones, you're okay. So, like, if I hug the wall, yeah, that'd be okay. Uh, one more up, Coops. Yep, that one. So I should be still over twenty feet away from her, I believe. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, you're about exactly thirty feet away now. Uh, am I still in a heavy obscurement? No. Okay. So I am going to finally cast something worthwhile. Uh. I am using Raltham's Psychic Lance, level 5. It is a DC 17 intelligence save. Succeeded. Nice. And just double checking that this. Uh, so it did succeed on the save, or it failed the save. Yes, it did. It did succeed on the save. All right. So it just takes half as much. Okay. And that'll end my turn. All right. Faceless in the pit. I um see what kind of pit is, is is this pit just a square or is the pit covers the whole floor? like each one falls into the same pit. Each one goes down to the same pit. Okay. Can I use my wing boots to fly underneath the ground and pop up right in front of her and that one on the left? And do a surprise attack as I jump out of it. Right now you're swimming in blood, but potentially. Um, is it like any room where I can fly above the blood, or is it like the whole? It's like full all the way up to the roof. It's not all the way up to the roof, but it's it's per, pretty close. Enough for me to fly, or am I swimming? You're swimming right now. Okay, so I can't fly. That's yeah, um, that blood, baby. <laughs> would I be able to get to her and do a surprise attack out of that square on the left? Um, you would not be able to fly under the floor and pop up under another square. I'm not allowed to do that. Okay. There wouldn't be enough room. Damn. Okay, then can I fly... Oh, that was sort of a good idea. But anyway, can I fly up? Yes. <laughs> and since and do a surprise attack on the guy on the right. You can fly up, yeah. Would he... that pass as a surprise attack? No. Because I'm like coming out of nowhere. No. He saw you fall in the pit. Okay. Um yeah. I'll help take care of these guys first. Actually, no. I'm going to go all the way up. Can I... Is that enough movement for me to go to attack that lady at the front? You're about 45 feet away right now. How much movement do you have? Uh, 30 feet. Okay, never mind. I'll attack that guy. 20 to hit. 10 damage. 16 to hit. And 12 damage. On... The dude right now. Okay. 
That's the end of my turn. All right, next up is enemy one and then enemy two. All right. So the uh, first enemy uh, decides that they're going to attempt uh, something, and so they stare into deep into uh, the eyes of of Capone. Capone, uh, roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. Uh oh, come on, big boy. All right, was a five. You get plus four. Oh, plus four. I don't know so if it's going to matter. Nine. All of a sudden, you're looking at this, uh, you know, this guy, and he kind of looks, you know, looks like he might be your buddy. I don't like this oh. vampire. You don't really want to attack him anymore. Oh, boy. Uh, Just the one? Him. You kind of want to protect this guy. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was charming. I kind of like this guy. I do like this guy quite a bit, yeah, don't I? He seems like a pretty cool guy. I mean, his vampire is kind of cool. You kind of like him. He's, he's neat, you know? So you think you want hey to protect there, little him. Buddy. He's, these other guys, you know, you never liked him anyway. Yeah. So, you know, you know, they want to come attack your friend, you know, your new friend. I mean, they, you know, you have to go, go get him, you know, you have to attack him. Hey there, little buddy. I'm going to protect you with my life. I kind of like this little guy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do I like the other one too or just this one guy? No, just that one. All right. The other one, All right. He, 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 no, you're indifferent to him. You don't care about him. You, you, you can attack him. Yeah, I look at that guy and I say, oh, screw you, buddy. But this guy, I like this guy. That guy, yeah. that guy's cool, though. Was it enemy one that charmed him or not enemy two? Yeah. Enemy one. Enemy one, yeah. All right. All right. And uh, next up is enemy two. All right. And enemy two um, also looks over and uh, takes a look around and uh, you know, stares deep into uh, Faceless's eyes and attempts the same thing as vampires are thing better to do. Roll a wisdom save. And of course, Faceless is unaffected. He's like, eh, screw you. I don't care about you. Nice. He's done very wisdomous. All right. Retsum is up next. Yeah, I'm not intelligent, but I am very wise. No, nobody likes that other vampire. He's not as cool as the other vampire. All right. Uh, so. We've got one vampire being protected, and uh, he's cool in some people's eyes, <laughs> but not everyone's. <laughs> All right, um, super cool. So while you guys do that, I think because I actually have enough movement to oh, get muted. over to this girl, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fly on over to her. Ooh. You get rugged? No, I think my Discord just muted. But oh, okay. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I actually have enough movement speed where I'm going to uh, fly on over to uh, the girl up in the front. And say, hello, lady. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you guys remember those bottles that we found in uh, in the pantry earlier, I'm actually going to take one of them out. I'm going to take the red one of those bottles out. And I'm going to kind of offer to her that, hey, we can, we can, we can just take care of this right now. Me and you, we can have a little conversation. Did you I brought this? me? <laughs> Maybe. I brought this wonderful perfume uh, for you. And uh, I take the bottle out and then I just smash it on the floor. It is a bottle of malice poison. And <laughs> she needs to do a DC 15 constitution save. It creates a five foot cube of gas, even if she holds her breath. Uh, that's uh, ineffective against it because the, the poison will get into everything. Oh, she takes a deep, deep breath into this poison and she actually is like 
Oh, smells pretty good. I like it. I must get some. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what uh, I was hoping for. <laughs> Everything just slowed down in slow motion. You could hear Bondo say, I just fucked up. <laughs> yeah. She seems to quite enjoy hey, that. That wasn't me that said it. I just fucked up. <laughs> it's not the only one uh, so far tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, that seems to uh, have been uh, ineffective. <laughs> I therefore <laughs> shall shoot her in the face. <laughs> Good backup plan. Uh oh. <laughs> I rolled a two. Uh, so uh, that's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, Probably not gonna hit. <laughs> no, not even close. I just look back at the guys. I'm like, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh. Burn so does, tank. <laughs> does, the, does the smashing <laughs> of the bottle count as an attack, or can I still give her a little smack? You, you can try to give her a smack. All right, let's give uh, let's give her a little smack with Roosevelt. Oh, she's pretty impressed with yeah. the uh, perfume right now. You're getting plus 40 or tax too, don't forget. Yeah, I still don't think a 14 would have hit uh, with Peacemaker. <laughs> 27 would, though. 27, though, I think does. Yeah, um, you're going to need to... to re yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's all work. That's fine. That works? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll get her. Uh, and then I will uh, use a key point to a flurry of blows and try and uh, smack her up twice. Uh, 16 plus 4 would be 20. Yeah, that, that hits. Okay. And then we'll smack one more time. Uh, 15 plus 4 is... Is that gonna hit? Yeah. Okay. That hits as well. Oh, well, okay. Some, some damage, some damage, uh, and that'll okay. end. That'll end my turn. Now she's looking really, really, really mad. Uh oh. <laughs> and unlucky enough, it's her turn next. Oh no, God! <laughs> <laughs> so she stares very, very angrily at um this, this this bird creature that has just you know whacked her um after after giving her that nice perfume. And so when she does this, um all of a sudden you see her just kind of you know grab some stuff from her her pocket and and suddenly she just throws something in the air and then all of a sudden oh guess what Retsum just uh oofed into uh yeah non existence temporarily just just poofed and uh you find yourself in a in, in a maze just an, a trapped somewhere you can't find your way out at this moment Ted Red Oh my goodness. Okay. Ted Red! I thought I heard something. All right. And uh, next up is Capone. All right. So I am. I think uh, the first guy is pretty cool. I think the enemy number one is pretty cool. But the other guy, I, you know, I just don't like him very much. It's just the look on his face. I'm just not a fan. So I'm actually going to go look at him. And uh, I'm just going to start swinging my axe at his face. So uh, here we go. Oh, not 20. 28. To hit. And a 15 of uh, damage. I get to swing with advantage, right? Because of... Uh... Correct? Yeah. Twenty-seven to hit. Seventeen damage, and on my last attack, we are going with twenty-four to hit and twelve damage. All right. Next up is RWA. Okay. Um, I'm gonna channel some divinity. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give 35 hit points to Capone, 15 to myself, 
that tops out my 50 that I'm allowed to do with that. It's not a, considered a spell. So I can also do as a bonus action Healing Word. And I'm going to level 1 Healing Word on Ragnar. And I'm rolling that right now. Uh, oh, wow. I rolled good on that one. Uh, Ragnar, you heal 11 hit points. I healed 15, and Capone healed 35. And I'm going to move... Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm going to move one square to my right, not the black one in front of me. Hope I don't fall. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're okay so far. Okay, that's the end of my turn. All right, next up is Kala. Oh, I was going to try to spell magic. Capone? Sorry, you were cutting out there. Oh, I wanted to try to do dispel magic on Capone. To get him um, un in love with that guy. It's more like a bromance like a little buddy you know we're just buddies he's pretty cool i like our friendship so, let's see here so what level spell did he use on him that's the thing we don't know okay well it just it just depends on what kind of he um he didn't use a spell he used an ability an ability oh then maybe I won't do <laughs> That's not going to work. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw a thorn whip towards the lady in the back and maybe bring her up front. What's the range on that? Thorn whip is at back. 30 feet. I'm going to get as close as I can. Okay. Just 30 feet within within range. And not in a black square. 20, 25, 30. There's 30 feet. All right. And uh, so I hit her, I'm assuming. At 25. Is that it? I gave her some four damage. It's a little, little, little tap, little love tap. I love you. Spank. Are you pulling her? <sighs> no, but she can do it. She can stay there because it didn't okay. hurt her too much. So she can stay there. All right. And just be nice. And uh, Kala's gonna go ahead and end her turn. All right. Next up is uh, Ragnar. All right. Um. How close is she to me? She's still the same spot? Yeah, about 30 feet, yeah. You guys are both about, about 30 feet. About 30 feet. All right. Um. So I will spend... Uh, will I? Yeah, all right. Um, I'm going to spend two sorcery points to use Quicken Spell. Uh, I am going to cast level three Fire Deck on uh, Solaire. That is a DC 17 dex. Good old DC classic speed. fire dick. It's been too long. Uh, it was 15 damage on that. All right. And then. Because I used Quicken Spell, I can use a 
cantrip to go with it. And I am casting Firebolt. It's a 20 to hit. All right, hit. And 10 to damage. Okay. That will be the end of my turn. All right, next up is Faceless. I am gonna turn to enemy number two. And I'm gonna smack him. Sixteen to damage. Okay. Sixteen to hit. Does that hit? Yep, you hit the first time, you didn't hit the second time. You swipe past him. Oh, oh sixteen doesn't hit on the second time. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. All right. Next up is enemy one. All right. Enemy one is not going to hurt his friend, uh, pawn there. So instead, uh, which is over and, uh, does a little damage to, uh, other buddy there reaches over and, uh, grabs out and does some. But he does actually, actually, he does the little bite there. So, um. All right. Um, so, Faceless, you uh, have uh, taken uh, nine um, piercing damage and ten necrotic damage from the vampire bite. Oof. Ooh. Okay. All right, and next up is uh, enemy two. All right, enemy two does the same thing, except for also uh, does the same thing, and he once again hits, uh, um, bites, but he bites Capone, because Capone's obviously not his buddy. Um, and Capone uh, takes, again, the same damage he just took. That was uh, 10 and what, sorry? Uh, 10 necrotic also. So. It was 10 total? No, uh, p- piercing and necrotic. Okay. Thank you. All right, next up is Retsum. Uh, He was oh. poofed. Yeah, uh, is Retsum off the list now? Yeah, yeah. Retsum is, is poofed. Okay, he, I'm he, in a maze. But he does have a chance to return, so... uh. Some you have a chance to return. You can uh, roll and uh, get yourself back from the happy little maze there. Oh, uh, what do I have to roll? All right, you just have to uh, roll an intelligence check. An intelligence Don't forget your plus four. Out of the maze. Intelligence check. Okay, not a mm-hmm. save. Nope, just a check. Oh, you find your way out yeah, the maze. seventeen, and then a plus four. All right, you have found your way out of the maze, so now you're back. Hey, Hey, let's go. (laughs) You're back in the same spot you came in. You were at earlier. Well, you reappeared in the same spot you left. All right. Now this lady has really made me angry. (laughs) I've had some time to reflect on what I went through in uh, inside that maze. Uh, And I'm going to come and I'm going to shoot her in the face again. Well. I don't think that hits her. <laughs> so no. I'm gonna use I, I'm gonna use key point, even though it's plus four, that would be a fifth fourteen. So if I use one that's sixteen, I'll use two key points to make it uh eighteen. I assume that would hit. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, 11 damage, and then I'll give her a smack with Roosevelt. Oh, let's go. All right. <laughs> that that scared Locked me. It was on a three and rolled over to a 19. <laughs> uh, and then we'll nice do some hit. damage. Uh, and then I'll use uh, one more key point here to do the flurry of blows and hit her two more times. All right. Uh, okay, 23. Oh, 
Oh, let's go with these rolls. Let's go. All right. Did some good damage there. That ends my turn. Nice I hope done. it's good damage. <laughs> she can be like a super strong. <laughs> and she is. All right. Uh, next up is Lady Varia. Oh, I all right. This. Um, again, she's kind of pissed off here. And um, but she's like, you know, okay, fine. You know, you made it back. You have some brains. I get it. Okay, so she instead uh, uh, kind of uh, focuses her attention instead over to uh, RWA's direction. So uh, do a deck save, RWA. Uh -oh. All right. All right, there's 13. Is that enough? It is not, unfortunately. Okay, let me roll my D4 on top of it. For it, yep. How do I roll this? There it goes. Oh my gosh, a one. Are you kidding me? So 14. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, that's not good enough. And uh, as you see her, like, you know, this this woman just raging angrily at you, she you see her point over there and 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 and, and throw some, you know, you know, kind of symbols over your way, and all of a sudden, uh, you take uh. 50 force damage. 50, 50, like five zero? Yep. Thank God I heal myself. Okay. Holy cow. That's fine. That's fine, as Bruno would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to make short work of these guys over here. I'm coming in to fight her. <laughs> Shake it off. Is that the end of your turn? Or at the end of the enemy's turn? Yep, that's the end of her turn. All right, Capone's up next. All right, I am going to attack this guy. We're gonna try to get rid of this guy here. Um, I'm gonna try to get rid of this guy. I'm gonna uh swing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, twenty six to hit. Right, that's good. And seventeen damage. Okay. Still standing. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, 22 to hit, and 15 damage. All right, and you see the uh, vampire kind of just burst into this, you know, flames, and then all of a sudden just turns into dust. Beauty. Okay. And uh, so I'm actually going to make my way <clears throat> up to the lovely lady there, but I'm going to kind of dodge all those dark squares along the way, so I'm just going to kind of walk in a path that'll get me there. Um. Yeah, I just want to avoid all the dark dark squares, and uh, I believe I can get pretty close to her. I think I can get I can go fifty feet. Actually, I believe more than that. What I believe I can make speed is uh uh four oh, 40 feet forty feet. So we got five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty. You can get about here. Okay, and now so I'm not in range to attack with my axe, but I can throw a javelin at her. Correct. So let's do that. Mm, 11 to hit. Oh, plus 4. So 15 to hit. Not hit. Okay. Let's start faster. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. All right. Next up is RWA. Okay. I got one more use of Channel Divinity. I'm going to pop it again. Give myself 40 hit points. I will give 10 to Capone. So he heals up 10 more hit points, and then I'm going to cast as a bonus action Healing Word again, level 1 spell, and heal Faceless for 11 hit points. And I will... I'm going to move 10 feet up to the right. Yep, there you go. All right. All right. And uh, next up is Kala. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, 
I'm going Thornwinter again. Or you know what? Should I go ahead and just do a Thunder Wave on her? How many who's all up there? We could handle it. Because it's, uh... All right, I'll run up there. Avoiding all the special spots. And, um... Do a Thunder Wave on her. Con 16, of course. Oh, shit, it's only a 15. Now, am She's... I in the way of this? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be uh, Capone, Retsum, and Lady Variel who are in range. And what are, it's a con save? Yeah, 15. 16, I'm sorry. You guys both get plus four. Oh, plus four is not going to help me at all. <laughs> so 30. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to help me at all. <laughs> Well, it's only damage 15, not like 30 the like last time. So Retsum takes 15. Capone takes 7 or 8. Uh, 8, I think. And then uh, Lady Variel has to roll a save. con save. She saved. She saved, so yeah, it's 8, I guess. Didn't All add right. damage to Retsum, though. Nicely done. Just a scratch. <laughs> Just a scratch. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, is that your new turn? That's the end of my turn. Thank you. All right. Ragnar, you're up next. All right. Um, so we still have the goon in the back of the room, right? He's got to be pretty hurt. And then we got her up front. I'm not sure. I don't recall him taking a lot of damage, but I'm not sure. Well, I, I think he ate Capone's first round of hits. Yeah. Yeah, I think Faceless and I both hit him at first, I think. I'm going to spend another two sorcery points. We'll go quick and spell again. This time I am casting Ralpham Psychic Lance at the guy in the back of the room. It is... Where'd it go? Uh, intelligence 17 save. He saved. So he'll take half of 24, so 12. Okay. And if he is still standing... He is. I will use Firebolt as a chaser on him. It is a 22 to hit. That hits. And 17 fire damage. Okay. That will end Jan Ragnar's turn. All right, Faceless is up next. Okay, I won. Uh, so, how does Charm work if I attack this guy? Will Bruno turn around and come back to attack me? Or is he just yes. out of range? Okay. So, sorry, can I just interrupt you? Uh, so, I will automatically come back? You are going to uh, defend this guy. You won't, you won't, you, I don't think you can. On, it's not on your turn, but you will on your turn. We'll try your best to defend this guy. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, if okay. they attack, then obviously they're attacking your friend, so... Run, kitty. Even run. if I can't see it, because that's why I was trying to leave his side. I was trying to get away from him. Even if my back is to him. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Right. Your rider dies, man. It's like a okay. link. All right. Well, I'll take the um, attack of advantage that he's going to get, and I'm going to come up as far as I can to the rest of the group. Actually, as you walk by, he's going to. Uh... He's going to grab hold of you and oh. grapple you. Oh, rip. Okay, that's the end of my turn. All right, it's uh, enemy number one's turn next. All right, right now, he is just uh, holding on to uh, Faceless pretty tight there. I'm grappling a hold of him. And 
I believe while he's doing that, he can also uh, take his nice little happy vampire fangs and attempt to bite this guy. Uh oh. All right. So uh, you will take uh, seven piercing damage and ten necrotic damage mm. from the bite. Does that what mean what I think it means? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's not my night tonight. <laughs> I, I think night's going to be the only time for you for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice knowing you faceless. Yeah. Good luck. I, think, I think we're going to start calling Edward Cullen. <laughs> really glitter <laughs> all right uh ragnar is up next. oh sorry uh, red sun is up next uh, okay uh well after uh that bombshell <laughs> of news um yeah i guess uh i'll give i'll give this lady a good uh good shot to the face again let's see here Oh gosh. Well, that didn't hit. <laughs> we'll give a smack with Roosevelt's. Did you forget your plus four? Ah, the plus four wasn't going to help, I don't think. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, it would have gotten to a 14 at the most. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Roosevelt hits, though. That's a 27. Uh, and then I will use another key point here to do another flurry of blows. Smack her two more times here. Uh, 13? I don't think hits. I'll do the no. D4. Uh, that brings it to a 15. Does that hit? No, it does not. Okay, I will use one more key point. Bring it up to... Uh, a 17? Not quite. Oh! Close, okay. but not quite. Okay, I, I get one more smack. One more smack. Uh-oh. Well, that's... <laughs> I don't think that's gonna... That's gonna do anything anyway. And that, uh, that ends my turn. <laughs> All right. All right. It's, uh, Lady Vary up next. All right, now she's really, really, really getting mad. <laughs> see like the anger in her uh being really frustrated now as she's getting whacked over the head with this stuff so she she points at this this bird creature who has now like attacked her multiple times and not gotten the hint and she she lets out one word i what oh no oh Wait, no what? <laughs> oh no oh shit oh no and all of a sudden Let's them drops dead to the ground. Bam. <gasps> when you say dead. Uh, guys, that was power word kill. Does dead mean like, what does that mean? Exactly. It means he doesn't, kill? Yeah. If you're under a hundred hit points, uh, it's an insta kill. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I lucky I have a hundred and. Look, you have 105 hit points, so... Uh, uh, me? Not so much. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Kamon's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. All right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna just, like... There's just feathers everywhere right now. Just feathers just scattered all over the place. I kind of move them out of the way, out of my face, because they're a little itchy on my nose. And then, uh... I'm going to go up and I'm going to stand exactly where my dead buddy is. I'm just going to kind of look at him and just like be like, rip, you know? Uh, and I'm going to start really swinging on this lady. Um, before I start doing this, is there any way to break this buddy curse I have with this guy? Can there's anything I can do? Or am I just, I love this guy. He's my boy. Nah, there's nothing you can do, bro. They we're stuck together. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Well, let's swing. First one is 25 to hit. Fall. 
Right. Oops, that shit. That was the wrong. Sorry, that's the wrong attack. Wrong attack. Um, nine damage. I kind of messed that up. That's fine. Uh, actually, no. I gotta. That's fine. Whatever. Okay. And then my second one. I kind of messed that one up too, but it's fine. Uh, okay. twenty-two to hit. That hits. And then uh, seventeen damage. And then my okay. last one. Twenty-one to hit. And 16 damage. And that's the end of my turn. All right. All right. Uh, RW is up next. All right. I'm going to avoid the black squares, move up 30 feet behind Capone. I'm going to cast okay. Greater Restoration on him to remove the, his uh, debilitation. It does affect charm effects, so I think that will do the All trick. Right. Okay. And it's a level five spell, marking it off my uh, sheet, and All I right. am done. Sounds good. All right, Cal is up next. So, um, did it, do I think that took? Did that work, or do yes, I not know? It worked. Okay, Capone, you're free. Hey, let's go. Thank you, sir. I'm I look back at that guy and I'm like, I don't like that guy anymore. You know, it's, it's over. It's not my guy. He's not as cool anymore now, you know. He's not cool at all anymore, yeah. So um, I'm going to try to hit her with my flame blade. Um, 23. A 19 damage. Okay. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did it hit her? Is she hurt? Yeah, she's hurt. All right. All right. Um, I'm done. All right. Uh, Ritz. Uh, uh, Ragnar's up next. All right. Um, what would it take to release the grapple on Faceless? Um, needs to succeed on a thing, but I guess you know you might get help him. I don't know. Probably he needs to succeed on a save, but you could potentially help him with it. I guess, but as far as your turn, I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, then that kind of hinders what I was thinking. So I will turn my attention back to uh, lovely lady there. Uh, I I will cast Routham's psychic lance on her. Uh, intelligence seventeen. He succeeded, but some good damage there. She's pretty badly injured at this point. Still standing though. All right, face the syrup next. Okay, uh, what do I need it to succeed to break this grapple? A strength check. Do. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? It's a strength check. Nineteen, eighteen was the negative. You, you did. You were able to to escape. Now you are escaped from the grapple. You're free. Uh, since. I am done with this guy biting at me. I am gonna whack him. 18 to hit. You're able to hit him? 14 damage. Nineteen to hit. Yeah, that hits. Seventeen damage. Okay, and he is down. And that's the end of my turn. Let's go, baby. Actually, can I um, use my movement after my attack? Because I haven't moved. Uh, I believe you should be able to. Uh, can. Can, I, can I move up as close as I can to the rest of the group, please? Yeah. Obviously, avoiding all the traps. <laughs> yep, right about there. And uh, next up is Retum. Well, I mean, 
I'm dead. Rex is a little busy right now. He's he's a corpse. <laughs> you just you guys like you, you hear like a little like and you think oh, but it's just like the last breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, nobody I, even nobody even tried no to revive him or anything. Did anybody revive him? <laughs> is there anything. any death saves or anything? Because like I could I just I just got an axe, man. I can't revive the guy, so I just you know, I just kinda moved him to the side and then did my thing, but you guys come on, man. It's to kill death. It's okay. Kill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm dead dead. <laughs> you will be missed. All right. Well, uh Lady Varyel's up next. Look at her and now she's kind of getting just bored with you. She's like, oh, okay, I'm I'm kinda of getting tired of all of this. And, uh, and so what she winds up doing at this point is she is um, going to uh, 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 shoot out a, 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 you see her fingers just kind of go, you know, round and she's going to um, uh, uh, spread out this like, you know, giant, you see this giant fire, ball of fire, just kind of zoom out towards you guys. The area. Is a fireball a healing by chance? No, sorry. So, uh, yeah, so she's sending out this, this ball of fire and, um, yeah, you will, uh, need to, of course, make a, uh, a save here. Make a, uh, deck saving throw, 20 foot radius in a sphere area of around there. 13. The view who are still alive, that is. And still present. 22 for RWA. Hey, RWA is still, o is okay. What was um the radius of that attack? Uh, twenty foot. Yeah, everyone's within twenty feet. Yeah. Yeah. I am fifteen feet. Yeah, I took full damage. All right. And so um, you will take a good whopping I don't know, forty damage. Looks like. Oh, lovely. Forty. Yep. And half if you saved. Ooh. You don't have any resistance to fire. What was the save on that one? Um, Dex saving throw. Yeah. You what do we have to? I hit thirteen. What do we have to hit? Oh, um, yeah. You would have to hit a. Uh, you you didn't save. <laughs> okay. It was a um, higher than that? Yeah, it was six. Six. Or did you still get the plus four on the saves? Oh, hold on. I got a plus four. Hold on. Oh yeah. So that you did difference? save with that. So you did save, yeah. I so save. You did save. Yeah, you yeah. did save. Oh, okay, sick. So, what do I take instead? Sorry, twenty. You just take half of it. Yeah, you take twenty. Yes, twenty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up is Capone. Oh, hold on. She's not done yet. Uh -oh. oh, sorry. Assuming she was done with her turn, she's not done with her turn. So after she gets done shot shooting this fireball at you, and she looks terribly bored with that, she suddenly uh, decides she's going to uh, cast yet another spell. That is her legendary. She is now going to um, getting out of dodge, and she cast a another spell. And suddenly, you see this this little lovely little um, a portal appear, and and she 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 disappears into the portal. And you there to uh, think about what you've learned? Uh, so can I get follow her through the portal? Oh. <laughs> Even and how did that could. work out for you last time you jumped yeah. through a portal? Yeah, say that. You could, probably he should go for it. He should go for it. Good. You have my blessing. Go for it. <laughs> Man, I was so, just going to read uh, and smack to her, too. I gave her a nice back rub, and this is the way she treats me. I'm very uh, upset with her. Do we Do we take... What do we do with, uh, with uh, our friend here, our dead friend? Uh... So I, I say try we... something. Oh, all right. Try that first. What do you What are you suggesting? I was suggesting bring them back to the Tabaxi village and see if any of the high clerics there could help. Well, we got a healer here. Can our healer help him? Well, you can't heal something that's dead. Like it's a process. Yeah, a... It's a process to bring him back from the dead. I don't have the components, and it's a process. I don't know where. Ted Red is. So I am going to invoke divine intervention. I don't know if it'll work. 
and I'm going to speak to my God. I'm getting like a meditative stance. I'm talking out loud. I call out to the sovereign of the word of the wealth, Kol Karan. I've long carried your banner, your teachings, and your will. I know what the legends tell of the other gods not considering you one of their equal. And even in my darkest hours of confusion, feelings of abandonment, I've always plowed forward carrying your banner, your teachings, your will. Through the last war, through the betrayal of my brothers, I never gave up. I don't know why you've brought me here on this quest, but I have nonetheless carried on. So in this dire hour, for the first time ever in my existence, I call out to you for aid. This is my family. I have had none other. Please bring back Ted Red Bootknocker and Retsim Yatit. Bring him back to us. And I roll my dice. I have a 10% chance of this succeeding. So I need to roll a 1 or a 2. You've got this, my man. And I rolled the 18. <laughs> so DM, mm -hmm. Kira, it is in your hands. Well, Koran, as you know, heard your call and, and, and listened and, uh, you know, feels a bit, you know, you know, concerned with your plight. Does feel, you know, that, that perhaps, you know, something can be done about this. So they have agreed to resurrect some Yatit in this particular instance. Provide that 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 to your to your to your group and to you. Um on the um occasion that you sacrifice one magic item of your choice from the group. And you can decide which magic item it is that you have. And um We'll accept that as an offering, and in return, turn read some Yatit. Uh, Ted Red is not part of the bargain. I will sacrifice my mace. It's a plus one mace. That is, all my items are plus one. I will sacrifice my mace if that's acceptable. Can I can I sacrifice my cock ring? It's easy come, easy go. I just got it. No, this is between me and my god. I appreciate your offer, but this is a sacrifice I have to make. All right. Is the, my mace acceptable, or would he like something else? Oh, Koran accepts your mace. Okay. I apologize to myself underneath my breath to Ted Red. I'm sorry, I'm a brother. I tried. With that, you see that um, all of a sudden, uh, D's nuts runs into the room. A bit late, but uh, still runs into the room. And uh, Ritsum is now oh, alive and alert and awake, although a way bit shaken up and um, um, definitely, you know, confused. What the hell happened? You died. Uh, yeah, you were dead, dude. Welcome back. <laughs> dead, dead, dead? L yeah. Like, uh, as a doornail dead. dead. You were dead, dead, dead. There was feathers everywhere. I, you know, I tried to save you. I was holding you, and I didn't just ignore you on the ground. I was trying to help you and everything. It's just... Is this why I have this weird, faint memory of your new cock ring? <laughs> you may have had a good view of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, Dee Snatch runs in and goes, Oh, my. Oh, my, oh, my. Uh, oh, I I'm sorry about your friend. I... I, I know what happens when, when Lady Burial gets, you know, angry and, 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 and I know that she uh she has take where she has taken your friend and what has happened to him. Perhaps I can help you a bit. Let me explain. Lady is is, is what we call a lich and she has a, an item that, that that she has taken your friend and she has sucked his soul into and this item, you know, sustains her and, and Item, you know, it requires, you know, souls to, to keep her, her in her current state. 
existence. And so, um, unfortunately, your friend has, his soul has been sucked into this item. Of course, she must now um, go find this item and save your friend. You have 24 hours before he is gone forever. I'm afraid, so you must um, go locate this item and, and find it. Um, usually, when this happens, uh, there's a small item the person uses in the casting of, of that spell that is a symbol for the actual item. You will know what to look for whenever you uh, are going to find this particular item that 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 that, that Solus is kept in. So um, perhaps you can remember someone what it was that 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 she used when she cast a spell and 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 whatever type of item that she used. That's what you want to go look for. Um, and as far as where to look, um, I do know that she has you know some close relationships and perhaps that you know it would be nearby. Um, maybe you found something around that would give you a hint as to where to go look, and maybe who she is, has in safe keeping for this item. Okay, thank you for the information to, to retrieve our brother, our family. I just want to say to these nuts that the bird people will always be friends to the squirrels people. We greatly appreciate that. We really do. I do not wish to have war with you at all. You guys are very are misunderstood. We're at war with other nations right now. But while we have his ear, these nuts, do you happen to know anything of the whereabouts of Bjorn? Yes, unfortunately, um, to my knowledge, he returned back to Fancy Feast, and uh, thereupon, I believe he took his life. Um... At least that was his plan last I heard. He could not stand being what he was and, and, and therefore decided that that would be where he would die and he would end his life. One final question. Do you have any knowledge of a coin with a hole in the center of it? Um, uh, obviously I do. Um, well, yes, I mean... That would be an obvious type of item that might contain such a soul as your friends. Any idea where we might find one of these? Um, well, where do you find any coins? Where would there be a large amount of coins, perhaps? Goblins? Dragon. Dragons. Dragon. Dragons do, yeah. They like, they like shiny things. And there were the black dragon scales. The tabaxi have a vault full of useless crap that fell from the chicken village. Perhaps we start there, because it's supposed to be nearby, and it's where somebody that collects a lot of coin would be. Isn't there that Azamar plane that's also supposed to be, like, reachable? During the festival, uh, there is a time when, when it is so close, you can't cross. Mayhaps it's them. It would be close. I think this is a good place to uh, end the adventure for this week, and you guys can discuss, proceed, and uh... how to get back to Ed Red. Get yep. back to Ed again. Agreed. <laughs> Beckers abound, dig fire around, snorting magic and moon dust. Riding dragons flood, semen and blood, summons ready to bust. Crew of fucking beauties, we screw and do drugs all day and night. Healers and dealers, we that clap and fuck our way into the fight. Fortune, I do electrify through my penis. I rhymes in full supply. I'm going to rock, sure you can't deny. Risk it, rip, rap, lip, my lineage, bless both.